Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. I don't, I don't even know what episode today is. Eleven. Eleven, Eleven of season two of the Cardboard Addicts podcast. Welcome, welcome. So you got me, Ren, and we're here with Grumpy and Sudan as well. Zen Hello. cannot make it because of work-related things, and I sympathize with that strongly. But uh, we're gonna go ahead I and don't. jump on into things. Yeah, God. Sudan, Sudan doesn't work, so he doesn't know what that is. I never work. <laughs> all right so if you guys have gone to retail stores lately you may have gotten lucky and seen some uh some older product i say older but it's sun and moon era product mostly hitting store shelves and online stores um i don't know if you guys have seen any of it but um we've seen some evolutions etbs <laughs> And well, sun and moon base set. I've seen other stores. people get lucky to find evolutions ETBs. Yes, uh, my store, my stores particularly didn't have them. They had the sun and moon ETBs, but they didn't have the evolutions. But I have heard of it happening to uh, for quite a few people. So, yeah, I was very upset I, that it didn't happen in my area because I was really yeah. hoping to grab a set of the Charizard. Well. Let me rephrase this. The set of the Charizard and Blastoise. <laughs> I was like, is there more than one set? Right, right. So I just, you know, had to clarify. But yeah, so that's what sucked. I passed on that stuff back when it was first rehitting stores. Because, I mean, I guess I say passed. It hit online for Walmart. I never got the ability to buy it online. So then I had to go to the store and look. And I was able to find a Blastoise one, which I still should have grabbed. And I didn't. Now I regret it. So that's, you know, typical typical day in the Pokemon collector's life. So, <laughs> and now you know why Grumpy is Grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> I but yeah, then there's the stores, so I just never see anything. <clears throat> well, it's probably better that way because you don't spend money that you don't have, you know. Zero FOMO. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, man, but, I can't afford that, but I'm sad I found it. You need to write a how-to. Well, Listen, though, I mean, you have to be one of the first people there or, you know, be in that line when they start restocking to even have a chance of the stuff anyway. Yeah. So, well, yeah. So my friend, area. when I when I saw um, one of the people on Twitter talking about the evolutions possibly hitting stores, this was Friday morning. Um, so um, he went out because <clears throat> he lives in town where there's a bunch of targets and Walmarts and. One of the Walmarts he went to had an empty spot, $39 ETBs. Could have been, you know? And he was like bright and early there. They had just restocked. So I've seen in uh, some of the posts that people have made about those that they're not putting the ETBs up at the front where the card sections are, but back in the toy section, like kind of how they used to do it. Yeah. Um, so definitely check there if you're going to some stores, but. When last I had entered a store of the Walmart design, they had uh, put it in locked containers. You know, like see that would be nice, like a glass this, case. Half, yeah, there was a glass case. Half the half the aisle was still had the hangers with this like this toys nobody really wants to steal, and then in the <laughs> cases had the ones like the more expensive, the ones people are likely to steal. Um, and uh. Or I, there was also like another a Walmart of Walmart design that had a. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> that's, not, that's not appropriate. But uh, he found new power. I'm puffy. But uh, they had it at the counter behind at the service. You know, at the you know like the side grip counter, the um where they had like the the adult items. They have them like hiding there, not at the spe service center, but like that middle aisle. Oh, you're talking about where you have like tobacco products. Oh, the the cigarettes, the and adult alcohol. items. Yeah, pretty sure you can say get... tobacco, but okay. I don't know. I can't. Say... I couldn't say certain words. I'm just hearing. <laughs> Anyways, and... Anyways. Don't see that suit on. <laughs> well, he's living in your head rent free right now, isn't he? Oh yeah, <laughs> everybody lives. Right he's got a big plot of land driving. up there. But, yeah, but anyway, they, uh, there's there's some <laughs> other there's some other products that are uh, coming back too. I've seen, so I've seen personally in my stores some of the um, 
Burning Shadow, uh, Burning Shadows, Shadow and Girl. Guardians Rising's. Um, what do they call them? The challenge boxes where they have like three or yeah. four packs in the deck. Are the build yep. and battle sets? No. no, they're not. They're not. It's like before the build and battles. Essentially, it was those. Mm. I'm pretty sure they're called challenge. Decks. Challenge. Yeah, I have one, but it's not in here. Yeah, so I've seen them starting to stock some more of them as well. Um, Wasn't one again, called like the Alolan Challenge one or something? It like features Nine Tails or something like that. Yeah, Nine I think Tales that's right the Guardians Rising one, but yeah, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure, but they they've been stocking a lot of these uh, like reprints from yeah. um, Sun and Moon era coming back in. So uh, if you are a sealed collector or if you just like that whole era, you know you want, you want to start checking those stores. I'd like to get a hold of some of the old Sun and Moon ETBs at the least, just because I like I, I like ETBs. There's a lot of them here, but um, for those on the other side, I pointed at my back my background. But I, uh, I and there's some right here, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Right there. See, I mean, I kind of miss that era to be completely honest. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I mean, I figured you want to show everything off, you know. Yeah, you might uh, as well. It just, I, 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 as a collector, I, I, I decided I wanted to at least make sure I have the ETBs. And of course, right as I went, yeah, this is the direction I'm going to go. It went where it went. And yeah, we got like 14 different <clears throat> variations. And well, and you well, know, everybody now, scalped some. two different variants. It is, I was going to say, started to carry. Yeah. I was going to say that. So when I went, um, so we, we went grocery shopping on Friday and I was kind of like, oh, cool. You know, they'll have stock. Maybe I'll get lucky, whatever. And they had a ton of the base set Sun and Moon ones, specifically the um, Lunala. A, no, Saw Galeo, the orange Saw box. Galeo. Yeah. So that orange box looks a lot like the Charizard box. So you get really excited when you're around the <laughs> corner and then you're like, oh, damn it. It's just it's just Sun and Moon. It's not it. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's kind of was... strange that you had a bunch of Saw Galeo, though, because it seemed like my store had it was like 80 20, but it was Lunala, the purple box. We we didn't have any Lunala, as far as I saw. Um, and oh, then my geez. friend was sending me pictures, and they mainly had the Solgaleo, too. Now, I don't know if they had any of the Lunala, but not that it really matters. I just, you know, seeing the orange one, I'm just like, Charizard bugs? So, yeah. But it was funny because they also, like, they had just stocked recently. Um, you know, how recently, I don't know. But for the most part, everything looked, you know, pulled to the front and nice and pretty still. Um Faced. Yeah, and they had the uh, <clears throat> the mystery box that they kind of recently came out with that has the Charizard oh, pack yeah. on it. And uh, the guy, there was a guy there just like picking up all of them and like calling his friend and telling him, you need to get down here, man. And I'm just like, dude, they kind of suck. So like probably wasting your money, but whatever. See, you, so. you're a better person than I am because so for the, the last little while, scalpers have pretty much only gone after sports. Like they've kind of, unless, you know, the UPCs from celebrations come back out. Like they've been pretty much leaving everything Pokemon on the shelf. And these guys started seeing these mystery boxes appearing on the Walmart shelf and they started taking them all. And I'm just sitting there and going, go for it, man. You are wasting your money. And I can't wait to hear you complain about it. <laughs> it just, it was funny because I hadn't seen most of the time when I see people show up, what happens is it seems like they're either like me and they're nerdy, but shy about it. So they kind of like, want to like peek and then see what Pokemon stuff was. And you know, if it's something they kind of want or not, and then they'll kind of look through the other stuff just to see if there's something that catches their eye or it's the sports guys, like Ren was saying, and they just come right into the sports. They get all up in your way. They don't care. They're usually kind of douchey about it and how they mm -hmm. approach, you know, going in there. And so, you know, it kind of makes you like stand back. Cause you're like, I mean, I don't care. Just, you know, do what you're going to do. Like, as long as you're not taking my stuff, you know? Um, but it is weird. Cause like, I've definitely seen more, of like the scalper esque type people starting to pay attention again. Cause probably with all the hype with the Charizards coming out again, and then like they're starting to make the mystery boxes, maybe, I don't know. Um, could just be coincidental, but it could just chance be product of availability too. Well, even That's having true. a chance at a vintage pack is still, you know, I mean, isn't it kind of the same odds as some of these sports boxes <clears throat> that you could pull that big ticket item? Or is there actually like more? I would say no, because with the mystery box, they don't so for example um i believe it was real breaking nate who opened one and you get two recent packs so like 
you know, uh, Sword and Shield era. Usually not yeah. great. It's like ones, Fusion but, Strike you know. and Chilling Rain or something. But then they put an old pack in, and I be- I'm almost positive it was Real Breaking Nate who opened one, and he got a Lost Thunder pack. Now, Lost Thunder is a great set. I'm not saying like it sucks or anything, but to me, if I was getting an old pack, I would want it at least to be early XY or old. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you, it was an old pack. you think about it like yeah. two years ago before the pandemic even started, you could still find that stuff in the, on the shelves, you know? Yeah. You figure before the oh, pandemic, it still feels it was, modern. Like it, it yeah. still feels relatively new. Like you figure up until the pandemic, pretty much like around that time, you could buy evolutions booster boxes for like a hundred dollars, you know? Yeah. And then just all of a sudden there was a shortage, you know? And all of a sudden it was a huge, like, like a uh, scarcity happening where, Oh man, that box you have for a hundred dollars is actually worth like a thousand. And it's like, is it though? Like, well, I so. wonder if there was an actual scarcity and I'm wondering if that's due to the fact that there's, you know, scalpers jumped on top of it. And now that the scalpers freaked out because the you know it started to bottom out and they were not making any money, maybe they sold it to these. What is it? What, who, who's the third party the, people? Like yeah. M, was it MJ Holdings no. and MJ Fairbanks? Holdings? Maybe they're going. We'll buy your wholesale. We'll buy it. They took a hit. Maybe I, that's the only way they're uploading. And so are, the other know. thing I don't like about this particular um, mystery box because I actually did buy two. Um, not on Friday, but like uh, like a week prior. The thing I don't like about them is all... So I got one box. I haven't opened one. It's still sitting over there. I'm not sure I'm going to open it. And then the one box I did open had three regular packs in it. And they have the cardboard sleeve blisters. And imagine imagine this is the sleeve blister, right? Well, it's bigger than the box, right? So what they did is... And shove it in the box like that. Mm-hmm. And so you open it, and all the packs are shoved in there like this, and you're just like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like, yeah. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, are these all bent up and stuff? And luckily it, they were fine, but it's just like you could have just. It's like why them. they could have just a taken them out of the the yeah. cardboard backing, because honestly, at this point, I, who really cares if you're getting a a pack from them and you're getting a pack from them? It, think people at this point know that they're not resealed but you, all you're doing is risking damaging the cards and ruining your reputation further by right. you know not or just create a box that's a little bit longer and, and this is that. my thought is so i was telling my friend i was under the impression that you could get three packs and then a fourth would be your bonus pack and thus you could weigh the box and you'd want a heavy box but in theory you would want a light box you would want to pick up all of them and see how heavy they are and find the lightest one because the lightest one should have an old pack or That's whatever. Not a it wouldn't have a, you know, yeah, it wouldn't have the cardboard blister. Yeah. So it's like you kind of didn't help the situation because I know there was one mystery box that offered a possible graded card. That one was weighable. But then also yeah. they did one that wasn't weighable, but the bottom had that, like the way it folded, you could mm. push it in and look. Mm-hmm. So thus, you, it's like you, you're you not taking anything into consideration. And it's probably because you don't care enough to do so as a company. But like from a collector standpoint, it would only take opening one of these to realize this. Hence me, right? Or watching people open them and realize, okay, wow, you know. And then you could just start going around and weighing them. I don't know if it actually would work, you know. But pretty positive you could just do that <laughs> so. i mean you bet you basically got to be one of the first people there like i was saying earlier to get these boxes and have your chance at getting them you know untampered with and all that 100 percent, yeah and i think that's why they went to <clears throat> the new style of box that they have now because like the old ones so like uh, this box right here that i have it's that it's the older style it's the one where grumpy's talking about like you could push the bottom in without mm-hmm. breaking the seal and you could like shine a light into it and see what the packs were. Yeah. And that's what people used to do. And so is that the one that people would often pull like the Neo packs from or not often, but you know, it was nothing um, to see the, well, that's the, so that one up there is the Meyer exclusive one. That's the one that had the chance at a PSA card. So you had the uh, chance okay. at a PSA card and you had a chance at a vintage card. Or a vintage I'm pretty card. positive. That might've been the same box. Cause I remember it being a box that I probably couldn't get a hold of. 
thus yeah you it's know my, my exclusive so but i just remember exclusive. like a lot of people opening them and getting like in the neo range of a pack where it's like it was worth well, a think, lot but not like i think the one amount. that i opened that i got a vintage pack was a neo neo discovery and then the one of the older style ones i got um it was one of the ex series packs i, I can't remember i have a question for you guys no. You open, let's just say, you know, we all found those boxes. We all bought a box, right? You open your box and there's a base set pack in it. Do you open it? No. Um, I, I would always lean toward yes, just because I still believe that like all these packs are meant to be open, you know, like the cards are, are meant to be collected and played with and all that. Um, <clears throat> But I mean, I'll be honest, it, you know, I'm not I'm not a rich person. So if I knew I could get a couple hundred dollars out of it and I knew that could help pay off, you know, a bill or two, I might I might consider selling it. Let's just say I'd go right into my sealed collection. If I don't have that pack, I would go into my sealed collection because I still need to work on that. <clears throat> See, I always wonder what I would do, even though I don't really buy those boxes very often. And um, I don't I really I can't. I don't think I would open it. And the reason I don't think I would open it is because I don't think I would ever get another one. So it's like, yeah. I would, well, I mean, I they're definitely getting harder to find well, more expensive to find, but yeah, I mean, cause that's the thing. Like that's what sucks about, I guess the vintage stuff is it's not getting any cheaper. And even if it does get, let's just say it goes back to even like pre pandemic. Um, yeah. <laughs> if it goes back to pre pandemic, it's not exactly that affordable still. Like, right. So Zen at one point was buying old Japanese booster boxes and um, you know, he was, he would open some, you know, like, well, he would open the box and then sell some packs and then open some packs of his own. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he sold some to you, Ren. I'm pretty sure he sold yep. some to you, Sudon. And I, Ren I, opened I some too. So I bought three from him. And my intention was to, you know, eventually like, oh, you know, I'm doing the whole YouTube thing. If I hit like X amount of subscribers, I'll celebrate, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I always was kind of like, I don't know if I really want to open these though. And that was back when those packs were like roughly $30, $35 a pack. Yep. Not that unaffordable. Now, I don't <laughs> know what they're worth now. <laughs> and that's the thing though. Like to me though, my, pr my problem is... When I think of things from from my personal perspective, right, thirty dollars is not that much money in the like grand scheme of things. But it is a lot of money to think that. I mean, I guess the upside is in in the specific um, with the Japanese stuff. You were getting a hollow no matter what, yeah. so it's kind of like you're getting a reward. It's not the same as opening English, where you might get a non hollow rare, and you know it could be the Dragonair, and you're just like cool. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you know, so like it was different, but it's still to me enough money to be like, ah, oh, man, but like, do I want to spend, you know, spend that much money open in the pack? Now, I'm not one to ever sell my stuff. Again, I, I agree with Ren and I'm sure Sudon has the same sentiment. If if I pulled something, you know, from one of those boxes and it was worth a thousand dollars and I needed the thousand dollars, I would sell it, you know, um. I wouldn't be happy about it, but like, mm -hmm. right. I would, you know, if I had to, but I also, it's one of those very rare moments. Type situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, one thing I, I really hope is that I never face that type of struggle to the point of having to sell my stuff because I've, I'm very attached to the stuff I get. <laughs> like I would get so upset about having to sell my stuff. Um, like I, I would probably do many other things besides try to sell my stuff because that's just how I am. But <laughs> I just, I just, it's funny that like, I know people who immediately like, I, so I, I heard this discussion on uh real breaking Nate's uh, or well, the shadowless podcast. And uh, they were talking about the idea of, um, you know, if you pulled this pack, would you open it or not? And I think Nate was immediately like, for sure. You know, like I would want to open it for sure. And it's just, it's like, that's the funny thing. Like I was talking to my friend about it is he was like, oh, I would definitely open it. And I'm like, oh, I wouldn't. I just, I don't think I could. And he was like, why? And I was like, oh, I mean, it'd be worth a lot of money and it'd be a cool thing for your collection. And he was like, well, you know, you only paid $20 for it though. And I'm like, that's true. 
Like, it's not like you paid See, the value of I'm kind of like know? that, where it's just like, if you were ever going to open a pack, would you rather open the one that you paid 20 bucks for or the one you paid $200 for? 100%. Agreed. Or I'd rather yeah. get it for $20 and not have to pay $200 again to pay to open it. Right, and that's another way I to think about it. You also know? agree about that. And that's... I well, the thing is, is, you guys could take into consideration there might be a little bit of a... And I'm not... This is no hate towards Nate. I, I have nothing but love for Nate, but he also has a regular uh, a access to these kinds of packs. Honestly, yeah, there's still the nostalgia. And he enjoys it. I'm not taking anything that away from him, but he's still kind of like, oh, yeah, I can open a base set pack if I want to. I'm sure he has a full set, you know, like uh, of all the packs. That if he needed to, he can just call Leonhardt, or if he needed to, he could probably afford it. And, you know, that's awesome. Good on him. We all hope to get to that point, you know. As I said, I'm not shaming him. But, like, for us, that's that's not – we're not there yet. You know, we're not at that point. Well, so I can't go, yeah, let me go grab another base set pack and do that, <laughs> you know. And I completely agree with what you're saying and all that, too. Um, but, I mean, like, I've opened some of these mystery boxes before. And, like I said, I've gotten some of those packs, and I just opened them up because – my thought process is again, you know, they're meant to be opened. I want to enjoy them and I may not ever have a chance to get them again. So I'm just going to open them now while I have the opportunity. Right. And then should I want to, um, I, I tried doing the whole, like, I want to get one pack of every set that ever, you know, existed and all that. Um, I think I kind of knew in the back of my mind, I would never get a co and, uh, Sky Ridge. But <laughs> I kind of stopped on that. And that's at, at that point, that's when I was like, for sure, like 100%. If I pull a vintage pack, I'm just going to open it and just enjoy it. And honestly, at this point, so like if I were to open up this box up here again, where, wherever it is there, and I pull the vintage pack, I'm probably going to save it. I'm going to put it off to the side just so that when my son gets a little bit older, we can open it together and he can kind of enjoy a little bit of that history from when I was a kid too, you know, until you put it off to the side and come home and he's already ripped it open. And yeah. you know, honestly, <laughs> it would be initially I would be that shock and awe would hit and I'd be like, you know, oh, what did you do? But then at the same time, it'd be like, why well, set it off to the side? So you could open it at some point. So like, do I really have reason to be mad at that point? Not yes. Really. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I don't know. I just, I, it would be so hard for me to open it. I'm not saying I definitely wouldn't. I just don't think I would. Um, the it only thing be immediate I, for me, sorry. The only thing I would say in slight disagreement with suit on, on the Nate thing is I don't know that Nate can necessarily aff like afford, I'm sure he does have some in reserve just cause you know, Nate's obviously been clearly actively collecting for a long time, you know? Like, even before he started his YouTube, it definitely comes off as if he just was always kind of in Pokemon and buying packs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's quite a possibility that he kind of like, oh, you know, I'll save some of these and acquired them when they were a lot cheaper, you know, and just has always kind of had some still. He's a smart guy. He did invest. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't even want to put it as in like a investment for him. I think it's kind of like us collecting where we just collect, you know, and just have stuff. But the difference I was going to say, though, is I know for a fact he's opened plenty even in recent times, and that is very different than any of us. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't. The last time I opened a base set pack was back when base set was hitting the shelves. You know what I mean? I don't know about you guys. I want guys, to clarify. But... I am not bashing Nate in any way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, 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 I don't just... want any drama right. there. Right. But, but, suit on hates but I mean, you, bo you both made good points. So, I mean... If anybody oh, has dude. access to him, it's probably him. But also at the same time, he's probably collected so much. I mean, I imagine if he's in, he was into it as much as I truly think he has been his whole life, then he was probably buying booster boxes in the early 2000s, you know, to the uh, late 2000s when they were, you know, $100 a box still and, and just like stacking them. That So that's one funny thing. If you go back, uh, Danny, like her, some of her original videos on her channel is her opening some of those boxes when she was probably like 14 or whatever, or probably, I guess probably younger than that. I don't know how old she is, but she was definitely a lot younger. She's and it's just so, something. it's just so funny. Like for one, I mean, obviously her voice is so different then, but <laughs> like on top of that, it's just crazy to think. Cause she, I think her, the videos are from like 2006, maybe to like 
2009. And she was talking about it on the Shadowless podcast. I think she was talking, this was such a while ago. I think she was still a guest and wasn't like an actual member. Um, but she was talking about how the boxes were only like, like you said, like a hundred dollars. And I was like, that doesn't seem like that long ago, I guess. Cause my mind keeps thinking of 2008. Like it was only like 10 years ago when it's really not anymore. <laughs> but like, it just, I don't know. That was crazy to me. And I was just like, dang dude, like I could have afforded it then. Like I, I, I would have yeah. known, you know, like I, I am the same way. Cause I mean, I kind of got out of Pokemon for a little while. I played the games and that was pretty much it. Um, same like the, the black and white and then the X and white eras though, like even the games I wasn't very into. I, I didn't beat them until just recently. But I, the cards I, I for sure was session. Go ahead. I have not beat generations five, six, or seven. See, my big thing about the games no shame and, and really the cards in general is in part that like we got really well, I guess we didn't get poor. My my parents were tight with money and so, like, for example, all my friends at this point were playing, like, Xbox 360 and stuff. And, like, I had to save up money from, like, mowing lawns and doing odd jobs for neighbors and whatnot to eventually buy an Xbox 360. So, yeah. like, certain things, like, getting the latest Nintendo DS was, like, by far out of my mind. Like, you know, it just... Well, I, I mean, like, so, like, mid to late 2000s, you know, my high school years you're more focused on, you know, getting that car, being able to put gas into the car, going out to Taco Bell with your friends after the football games. I mean, that's what I did anyway. And, you know, like, and going doing and stuff like that. Like, nobody I hung out with in high school, I, I don't even, I'm sure there were some, but almost nobody did anything, you know, around Pokemon or, you know, anime, well, anything like that. So, I had it was a lot just like of we, all, that... we all came out of that area to move into, you know, different things. I had a lot of friends that still played Pokemon. I, I'm sure I know people that were like really still into Pokemon, but like they didn't express it that much. But I had a lot of friends that like really still played like, you know, when the new game came out, like every few years they got mm -hmm. it and they'd all be playing it for like the first month and then hop back out of it. Um, yeah. I just we never had the money to like keep up with that stuff because you figure pretty much every game came a new Nintendo DS, it seemed like. So you're talking it was, about... Yeah, it was like every two every two <clears throat> games or something like that. Yeah, it was a new system. Yeah, so you figure that's like every three years probably dropping around $300, you know, between getting the game and the DS. Like, it just... Yeah, it was not going to have a job. <laughs> yeah, that, that's hard to do as a right. kid. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that's, that's like a big part. Because I always had my Game Boy uh, Advance and Game Boy Color and stuff. Like, I literally still had... Well... I don't have the original Game Boy Advance because I broke it. I pretty much raged by losing and like smashed my head through it. But <laughs> I have my original uh, Game Boy Color. So, you know, like I still played those. It just obviously wasn't as much as I was playing like Guitar Hero and stuff. Yeah, I I don't know. I, just I was an adult. Done. Well, yeah, because you're old. <laughs> Y'all, well, while you guys are talking about being in high school, I'm like remember working at a game store, trying to make just enough money, making six dollars and thirty cents an hour as an assistant manager <clears throat> to be able to afford not only the PSP, the new DS, whatever Pokemon game or whatever was coming out at the time. It was not easy. Plus, having to pay rent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You definitely have the uh, the added responsibilities. And I think that makes it harder for a lot of people our age at that time to kind of stay into it, especially like if you think about the majority or like the biggest demographic of people who are were are and were into Pokemon. It's it's people around our age. So, you know, like late 20s to early 30s is, is probably the strongest demographic of people. I know. Sorry, Sudan, you're you're one of the outliers here. Um, I don't belong. I'll so, see you. you know, when Pokemon came out, we were all <laughs> we were all in like middle Rage school, or, you know, early high school years. We couldn't. We didn't have to, you know, afford rent or you know pay for cars, car insurance, stuff like that until later on in life. Which I is why I I truly think that's where some of the drop off in Pokemon in the mid two thousands kind of happens too, is like a lot of those people are now finding new responsibilities 
you know, the economy was kind of, kind of tanking a little bit. Yeah. And it's just like, you want to get out and explore different things too. So I think, yeah, I think the biggest thing that got me out of Pokemon, like the cards specifically, because I think if I had stayed into the cards, I probably would have easily stayed into the games and stuff too. But what got me out was all of a sudden Yu-Gi-Oh came through and everyone in my area was like, oh my God, have you seen Yu-Gi-Oh? And I just remember for whatever reason, you know, that sheep mentality of like, <laughs> oh my God, everyone else is into it. I'm going to be into it. And, you know, yeah. See, I never like, got into Yu-Gi-Oh. I Like so, even now, like I, I think the cards look kind of cool, but I don't know yeah, anything about Yu-Gi-Oh it. The video never games, the, the show, like never did anything with those. And, and that's the funny thing is like now that like I'm older and like, you know, getting cards and stuff again and all that. Digimon is like probably in Dragon Ball, but that's because I actually like Dragon Ball Z a lot. But Digimon, I actually used to watch as a kid a little bit enough so that like I do actually. And, you know, they're a lot more artistic, just like Dragon Ball. So it's like it is kind of like somewhat of a small staple, whereas like Yu-Gi-Oh, huh. I pretty much always Remember despised <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I always kind of despised, though, because. Like, I, I remember bringing, I think this was third grade, when me and my best friend used to bring um, our cards together and just, like, show our cards and maybe trade mm-hmm. here and there or whatever. And then we both got into Yu-Gi-Oh! because everyone else was getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! And it was always that thing where I'm like, yeah, this is cool, but it's not as cool as Pokemon. But, like, nobody else was into it anymore, so it was like, oh, I guess I'm not either, you know? Um, I think if See, that I would have loved to have it, stayed into it. I would have loved to have friends that just, you know, were into stuff like that in general. Cause like all my friends, family and stuff by time, like high school came around, it was, nobody was into any of that anymore. It was all about, you know, like sports or music. And Oh yeah. This I'm talking about you know, like late elementary school. Oh yeah. Like by the time I hit middle school, yeah. Card collecting was like nerdy and nobody thought that was cool. And you know, at well, this you point know, in time, you're for me, it, and, you're you're probably much of the same way. You know, as a kid, the only way I could get packs or even cards was if my parents would buy me them. And you know, we just we stopped going to. So the only place around here that I know of um, that I could remember from being a kid was there was a game store in the mall, and they closed shop. I want to say it was in it was during like the Ruby Sapphire era. And so suddenly we didn't have access to packs anymore. I'm sure they still sold them at like Walmart and Meyer and stuff like that. Yeah. But it was just one of those things where the parents were like, well, we're not going, I'm not taking you to the store because we're got to go grocery shopping or something, you know? So I just never got packs after that. And I kind of didn't want to deal with you walking around, throwing snacks in the cart and then being like, get that out of here. No more Doritos. No, you oh, know, I, I'm a pony. my, uh, my thing would have been like, Cause I have three siblings. So there's four of us kids, you know? So if she would have, if my mom would have taken us to go shopping, we all would have like scrambled and yeah, you know, like they used to have like the circle um, clothes racks or whatever. And you just go hide in there and <laughs> yes. cause a panic and stuff. That's gotta be chaos do. there in that, 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 that area you live where you have to like wear vests and protection run really <laughs> fast and dodge in between. Cause it's pretty terrible there, isn't it? You know what I used to do as a well, kid? We're not in war, but yeah. Without like fail, that. when we would go to Walmart, I don't remember. I mean, exactly Detroit's how close it was enough. Up, but <laughs> me and my mom would walk in, and I would immediately dart to like the toy section. And when I was done looking at what I was done looking at, I never even tried to find her. I would just go to the customer service and be like, "Can you page my mom?" Because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> I was like, I don't know where she went. Like. It's not happening. Walmart's too big. And this was before it was Super Center. So, see, I used well, to do a process of elimination. And then if I absolutely needed to, it was really bad because, so, like, what's your mom look like? And I'm like, I don't, I don't. <laughs> she looks like a mom. What do you mean? She, <laughs> she looks like, like a. I turned into Miss Swan. I'm like, looking like a man. You know, it's, it's <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I still to this day, I, what was your mom wearing? I'm like, she's this big. <laughs> Sir, we asked what color her shirt was. So she's I... about five four. She has curly hair. Yeah, but what's her? Well, it's shirt like my like? dad was. I have no about... idea. <laughs> He's like, okay, so you're buying this car. What? Okay, is it a four cylinder, six cylinder? And I'm all like, it's a Jeep. <laughs> it drives. It's it green. Has... It has four wheels. I don't know. I even went to look for the manual, and it's not in there. So I'm kind of going. <laughs> But yes, yes. Look up the VIN number and yeah, but no, you, you guys are talk- 
like we, we we've gone into this tangent, but yes, yes. Uh those are the good so Sudan, when, when when you were a grown man and you were going in there to shop for Pokemon when it released, how was that? For Pokemon, actually, I discovered it because I worked at a daycare and all the kids were like about this, you know, what are these strange monsters? <laughs> And I'm well, like, all right, to relate as is a, you know, to relate to the kids. I'm a teenager. I'm in high school, so of course it's going to eventually trickle to me. And so, would, would it I, trickle or would it not be somehow like upwards? I don't know. It's whatever interest goes in direction. I mean, Pokemon hit the TV, and then it was like, okay, there it is. Yeah, but think I mean, about it. Like, yeah, Pokemon, Pokemon was dropped for fast. kids, not for. Not for teenagers. It, it was really kind of no way to get it, no matter where it, it, at the age range. I well, mean, I was wait a freshman, you know, sophomore in high school. The, so it came out with the games initially, and I almost would argue that it wasn't made for kids because of just like how much you know grind and how difficult part of the games could be back what then. You no, know? fascinating is the fact that these kids were learning to read to actually play the damn game. Like yeah. these kids are fascinated yes, yeah. by like I don't, how does what is this word? How do I say this? And I'm like. I don't even know how to say mute. I mean, it's just like, what is, you know, like I had to look this up. And then of course I, you know, I gave every kid a Pokemon and that's how I figured it out, you know, but I definitely jumped in hardcore because it, it, that's just the, you know, I, I, because it, the five-year-old named Daniel at the daycare was like, look here, suit on. You don't know nothing <laughs> about this fire type. No, nobody could beat me. I'm still the best around here. Oh, oh no, my god! Is... <laughs> I can see him pulling out his Game Boy, so, connecting it to you know some so five year old. You know, I like, definitely sent you guys the TikTok of the guy who um he remade the oh, song, and I can't think of what it, what it's called. But after this, I'm gonna show it to you guys again when we are more finished. And it's it reminds me so much of Suit On right Help now. Help us, everybody in the audience yeah, watching but, the premiere. Help us. But, Help but us. Um, if we're not in the premiere, we died. Bro. <laughs> Bruh. From this awful TikTok, you have no idea, but, uh, bruh, bruh, it's South Park. Look, I I get made fun of so much in this podcast; it's ridiculous. <laughs> hey, we all we all kind of pass it all around, you know. We all can have fun, <laughs> but but yeah, I don't I don't know. I just it's funny because it's like I was thinking about that as we're talking about this too, because I forgot that the those mystery boxes existed with the uh, chance of of a vintage pack. Oh, and, that's how we got started down this whole hole, isn't it? Yeah, we fell down that hole pretty hard. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll sh- we're kind of going out of order, but we'll jump right to it with the uh, with this. Yeah. So tangent. This uh, this definitely happened. Um, this is a for those who can't see this, we're showing on the screen. Um, it's a PSA ten unlimited base set Charizard. And it sold for fifteen thousand dollars. So what's uh, kind of I, I don't know if it's cool, weird, what, but it was originally listed for thirty thousand. Um, but it sold for a best offer of fifteen thousand on eBay. And the last two recorded sales, it says this year of a PSA ten were eight thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars, so just shy of nine thousand, and twelve thousand five hundred. So the the market was, you know, it it was showing like it was kind of still steadily coming down just a little bit. And then all of a sudden you have this big sale and it it kind of goes up. <clears throat> and the thing about it is why it's it's so relevant is if you look at a bunch of other sales of vintage slabs, in particular graded cards, they're all going up again. Like they're they're trending now. They had come down a little price. bit, right? Yeah, so I think what happened was, and I'm not any kind of like, you know, market person or economic person here, so take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt, but I think the market was honestly just correcting itself with, um, what, you, got, you got some salt there? It's I, I have a few darn salt. grains of sea salt. I don't know if it's oh. kosher, though. <laughs> That's good. But I think the market was honestly just, and, you know, it was correcting itself from all the uh, what I call artificial highs with all these people like holding on to product, not release, you know, not sharing true numbers of things and then selling things at ridiculously high prices. And those, you know, who have the fear of missing out, just buy them at these ridiculous prices because the market was kind of finally correcting itself. And then this happens again where, you know, somebody lists one and it jumps up. 
I, I kind of feel like um, I. I don't know how many PSA 10 Charizards are out there listed right now, but um, I almost feel like it's another case of like the prices were starting to come down, but there's not very many of them on the market. So I'm just going to make an offer and it hits and then, okay, sweet. Got it for 15,000. But now people are seeing that and going, well, I'm not going to accept it for lower than 15,000, you know, because I want to make that much or more, you know, the market's going back up. I was trying to see well, if I could scan the barcode to see how many of the population count is on that, but I can't. No, it's, oh, well. it, there's nothing special about this. It's not like a, a and pardon me for mentioning the awful name, but Logan Paul opening, uh, you know, style like this. This is no, from it's, a specific unit. It's a, it's straight up just a unlimited base set Charizard that got a PSA ten. I mean, pardon my French, but is, what the shit, people. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just so I'm not like so surprised. Only reason is because I mean, if it's vintage, which this is obviously, eventually we're gonna run out of vintage. When I do not know, but right. like obviously everything is finite, meaning eventually you will run out of it. And so, but that's therefore... that's part of it is that we don't know the numbers out there because a like we we say and every time we we mentage, uh, mention mentioned vintage is wizards never put out numbers of what of how much product they had so they could have you know done like a trillion boxes they could have done 100 boxes we would never know and yeah i mean it, it's just funny because it's like the other thing is i think you have plenty of people who knew back then to invest you know there's probably plenty of people who bought a couple booster boxes and sat on it and there's probably plenty of people who did that and the boxes got ruined from being stored terribly and whatnot um but well, my son had this in his attic. I didn't know what this was, and I just have to get it out because <laughs> I want to build my rec room. But you know, <laughs> stuff like that, or or just like the card itself, right? Like, I have a, a base set unlimited Charizard. It is not going to grade a ten. Like, I would consider it probably like a five or a six. Obviously, it's not a ten, though. You know, so it's like right. plenty of people that do have their cards from when they were kids. That you know, it's just not like. Up until like I started collecting again, I think it was stored in a Yahtzee box without a sleeve or anything. You know, <laughs> like like good way to protect it. <laughs> well, it's just you figure it was from when I was a kid, so I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. You know? and you know, you weren't that wasn't on your mind back then. To like, oh, I need to make sure this is still protected and good to go ten year, ten twenty years from now. Right, you ready for some cringe? Oh, let's gosh. see. I mean, that's basically how it was stored. But at yeah, least you so, got those in sleeves. No, these aren't sleeved. No, this is all completely loose. But yeah, this is terrible. It's just crazy because you know that leading into this, right? It's like I'm just wondering where the market's gonna go. You know, with everything, there, um, there's definitely a shift in the market right now. Um, it, let's look at so. Two. Showing this egg. <laughs> He's got an egg. But hey, look, see, that's not, team that's not a holographic Charizard, though. But it's a Team Rocket egg. I think even that in a first Based edition that Ekans is only worth like maybe a dollar. But, so, you know, so Neo. The, real quick, the, the thing we're showing on the screen is from PSA, right? Talking about um, total cards graded and shipped in February of 2022 was 802,694 plus 3%. So only plus 3%. From January of 2022, but and that's so, that's just one month time. I, I was going to say your today they're yeah. at 15 or 1.5, almost 1.6 million cards graded just this year alone, which is a is a almost 25 percent up from last year at this. Why does time. anything have value? Well, and and that's the thing is, I so obviously right, we don't know, like Ren said the counts on everything like if we, and i don't even know if pokemon does this now like they probably do keep tabs on like how much they build or i guess create manufacture but they don't release that to the public i don't think um well with them i subpoena. mean they, they do reprints and stuff now too as we're obviously also, seeing yeah which i don't think wizard does and and so this is the thing though is like on top of them not having i mean i find it hard to believe that wizards of the coast doesn't have the stats on what they put out it's just well, they probably do. Them. They just they're not making it publicly available. But even more so, I bet they don't have a specific stat because I don't know. Though, we need to get a like, warrant. But like, you know, request. You, for example, do you think Wizards of the Coast would have down to the T of like, okay, 
first edition Shadowless Charizards created by us was 852,394. Like, I kind of don't think so. Maybe, though. I don't know. Even if they did, though, you know, some, with with individual cards like that, it's hard. It would you would never be able to keep track of it just because, you know, who you never know how many how many times did people put them in their pocket, like you know, a certain dark Blastoise, and then lose it in a mall, Shut or you know, <laughs> you know, keep it in your <laughs> pants pocket when you go wash them, or you know, just you know, parents threw them out. There's a, thousands upon thousands of reasons why those could go missing. And, so and even if you see them in the market, you you never know what the true number is. Now, now also to clarify, right? The P, the PSA numbers we just showed, the eight hundred and two thousand is graded in February, is all the cards, not just yeah. Pokemon and not just vintage or anything like that. Oh, those are all um, Charizard. Because <laughs> I was just reading, it only basketball was the most graded category in every in in both months. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. It said in every single month of twenty twenty one plus January. Basketball was the most graded of all the cards, so that because they, they had crazy. the most, they had the most value spread out Ooh, between actually, cards. This is an interesting Ooh. little uh, statistic. So uh, for the month of February, two hundred and twenty-seven thousand Pokemon cards, two hundred and twelve oh, bas- uh, two hundred and twelve thousand basketball cards, one hundred and forty-eight baseball, one hundred and twenty-three thousand football, and then twenty-three thousand football cards. <laughs> Or soccer. <laughs> he had to say it that way, huh? <laughs> but that's just crazy to me because it's like, I don't know. I'm just, I know obviously you still have an influx of people who are probably trying to flip stuff or, um, you know, they're new to Pokemon. So they hear all these values and still think everything is valuable. Not to say there's not value in stuff, but obviously like, you know, the the base set uh, Ekans that, you know, Sudon just showed if he got it graded and it got a 10, it's not going to be worth, you know, $100,000. No. I mean, yeah. either well, way, it, you're, you're getting those those people that are still like your scalpers are still going to scalp and try to flip product for short term gain. But this is obviously it always has been, but it, we're seeing it more so now the long game of. Is this um, a form of, of shilling, shill bidding type situation? Like why that went up so high? I oh you mean no. the, the that specific Charizard? Also, we're showing a, a quick uh, thing here. I just want to prove that Charizard still remains king. Uh, the most graded character for Pokemon was Charizard, then Pikachu, then Charmander, which I love to see Charmander getting some uh, <laughs> some love there. Then Squirtle, and then Zapdos, oddly enough. Um, and then there's the Yu-Gi-Oh stats too for anyone who does care. Um, Black Lotus. So oh, wait, the Black Lotus? Or a Blue Eyes, White Dragon, and Dark Magician oh, no. Girl. Magic Don't the surprise Lotus. me at all. Yeah, this man said Black Lotus. And then... <laughs> that's, well, the Black Lotus that's, is that's uh, magic. magic. Yeah. Showing another super sweet Charizard. But... Uh, did your, it, your question, <laughs> real quick, Kudon, it was not show bidding because it says it, was, it accepted a best offer, so it wasn't an auction. So this person... Okay, so this person obviously is going... I want to set a precedent, right? That's the correct word. I I, I want to set precedents, but you should, don't. Um, they're they're just trying to like either I'm trying to set a new high and try to, or I bought this is because it's going to make news. It so <clears throat> I don't know what the situation news. is. My guess is that they got this card back, you know, a couple months or you know, sometime after the height of the Pokemon trend and, you know, the market was probably coming down, but he probably saw, Oh, just, you know, two months ago, somebody sold this for 30,000. So I'm going to list it for 30,000, even though the market was still going down. That's the only, only rational way I can really think about why he would accept an offer at 50% of its listed value is if he, he had it, he knew that the market high was 30,000. So he's listing it up here but the market's coming down and eventually after some time has to go, okay, it's not going to sell at this again. So let me try to make the most money I can out of this. So somebody offers him 15,000. He goes, it's better than what some of the other current solds are. So I'm going to take it. Yeah. So, now, I mean, next question is it, was it this the same guy who used the, the funds that he wasn't supposed to use from the government? To, <laughs> to buy I don't think that was the same guy. I it's don't think the that's same the same guy. guy. Okay. Because he bought, he used those um, COVID funds. So for anybody who's out there who's who doesn't know, 
um, somebody was uh, charged. Actually, they weren't. They're no longer indicted. They were charged um, on fraud accounts because they took. Um, I think it was a Georgia. It was some like statesman in Georgia took COVID relief funds from taxpayers and bought a a fifty seven thousand dollar graded Charizard for it. I, I believe it was an uh, first edition Charizard, but I I don't really remember. But he bought a Charizard with those funds. He got caught. He got charged with it. He's now spending time in jail for it. And the uh, state of Georgia now owns a graded Charizard. No, he got um, uh, three years in prison for it. But yeah, so um, he's still in jail. That means he's in jail. Yeah, yeah. He's, I'm just he's saying. not going to be selling any. Do the crime, do the <laughs> What's crazy, though, is so um, it says that he claimed. Uh, that he had 10 employees and a revenue of $235,000 before the pandemic. Um, I wonder how much money he actually got. Like, so basically it says that, uh, let me see where I was just reading that. It says that he has to pay a fine of $10,000 and restitution of 85,000. So you figure essentially Mm -hmm. $95,000. Um, and I'm, I'm just curious if like he only had the, it was $57,789 for the Pokemon card, mm-hmm. um, which it doesn't say here which specific one. Um, one would have to assume probably a Charizard. but What, she didn't even know. buy a Charizard. It's not even that same graded Charizard. It, well, it was, it was stated earlier when the story was first developing that it was a Charizard. Um, I mean, I'm not they, they may not have ever actually showed it, so maybe maybe it's not been confirmed. But that that was just one news source, so it all kind of depends. Yeah, but yeah, it's and, so but anyway, I, obviously this guy was you know embezzling money, so there's extra <laughs> money on there that he's got to pay restitution for. It means he embezzled some of it. So, but so how much was the value on that Charizard versus the value on the one that was just you know set the standard? So you're you're talking about so that was fifteen thousand versus fifty eight thousand. Yes, so okay. you're talking about a Charizard, uh, assume uh, allegedly at the height of the the Pokemon market trend, probably in 2021. Now. I would assume that he did that, like early 2021 it was, when it was getting... uh, summertime of 2021, I believe. Because I was so, going to say that's that was, that was when the market was kind of going back up to its highest peak again. Because that was right. Well, I don't remember After the market the, ever really dropping in 2021 until later 2021. Yeah, and that yeah, was, was I think it was right after the Logan Paul thing, the the second time, not the booster box that he bought or anything, but cuz he was still doing he was still ripping open some boxes. Yeah, cuz that Everybody's Logan working. Paul's original, uh, which I think you were just talking what, about, was late 2020, right? Yeah, late 2021. You mean 2020? 2020, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Because I was gonna say, get my years. Uh, I sometimes it still boggles my mind that we're in 2022. What already. day is it? But yeah, I'm just curious it's because crazy. now you're seeing like a lot of uh, like so uh, the one place was showing just various cards that have gone for crazy numbers and stuff. Like um, MetaZoo had a card, but granted, I will say with MetaZoo, this one was a sample uh, hollow of Grim Reaper. It was a PSA 10 for twelve thousand. Which makes a little more sense what? in the idea of it being a um, a sample card, so highly limited, right? Yeah, very rare, um, highly sought after of those extreme collectors, right? But even like Yu Gi Oh cards, <laughs> even Yu Gi Oh was getting a lot of like crazy sales. Um, like they had a uh, <clears throat> a Dark Magician PSA ten from the Legendary Collection three, which I don't know when that is. Says twenty twelve. They went for almost two thousand dollars. Um, they had another, uh, blue eyes, white drag or unlimited blue eyes, white dragon from 2004 that went for $3,000 and they had a population of 79. So that's kind of crazy. Um, Jeez. it's just, I kind of wonder if the market is like, so I think the market for modern product is starting to go down because they can reprint stuff like we've been saying. Or they can overprint stuff like we've been seeing for like the latest, you know, sword and shield sets. But with vintage, it's still vintage. Like you're not going to see more. Yeah. Get the numbers are still finite. And, and that's yeah. the thing is, you know, you have a lot of people. A lot of these are probably like, you know, finally getting their PSA slabs back, you know. So we're probably seeing a lot more returns finally hitting the market. And these returns are 
you know, it's, it's, I guess, you know, it's one of those things where like now you have more hitting the market, but not in such a way that it's dulling down the market or I guess diluting the market. It's more so just like adding spice, if you will. Um, like I'm sure you can go on there and look up, you know, PSA 10 unlimited Charizard and see garlic powder, you know, you could see plenty of listings on eBay, (laughs) but I imagine it's not like tons and tons, you know, plus you got to weed out the fakes because, you know, you've got scammers, um, on there all day trying to sell you proxies and all kinds of stuff, (laughs) but it's just, I kind of wonder where the market's going to go now just because it's like, this is vintage stuff that to the moon. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, exactly. Like, I would think, theoretically, vintage stuff should only go up. Now, I agree Ren, with Ren saying there was the um, false, you know, jump because of the way, you know, the pandemic played out. But then it plateaued. It kind of came down. But it's kind of like, like, almost like inflation. So, like, it's hitting a new standard of here when, you know, before 2020 it was here. So it's like, well, it's, yeah, it's stock. It's like any other stock, you know, like they, they go up to their new high and then they have to correct itself. So it comes back down just a little bit. But when it hits that new floor, it'll never be as low as the floor below it, you know, as long as it's a healthy yeah. stock. I mean, so, unless I mean, like essentially what we're seeing in this. Yeah. I mean, the only way you would see a huge change would be if like everyone in their say mom's. Something. If I say something like Pokemon stock is bad, stop buying into Pokemon. Now it's going to drop. I wish it was that simple. More people but, are going to buy into right? it. It's like, right? I imagine the only way you'd see, like, for example, the Charizard, you know, graded Charizards and Blastoise and all that kind of stuff, like your real money getters. The only way you're going to see those ones drop would be if a ton of people submitted cards and diluted the market. Because then if, like, okay, there was a population of 100 of these PSA 10 unlimited Charizards, all of a sudden, there's like 5,000 of them. Well, now that 100 obviously has way more competition and thus drops the value. Mm-hmm. Um, or the market could act very stupidly and just be like, we don't care and just keep going up. I mean, and that's what I kind of think is happening because what would, would you see like million freaking cards in the last two months were graded? You know, not all, and came but back. But again, and not all were Charizard, but still, it's still well, the imaginary amount that were. And yeah, still, I mean, and the, the market's going up. Well, yeah, I agree with what Grumpy said earlier, though. You know, like Don't vintage, since vintage is finite. There's not going to be, you know, people are still opening packs and boxes and stuff, but it's in very mm-hmm. limited quantities. So the chance of getting, you know, hundreds more of these Charizards are very, very low. <laughs> 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 Caught in the act, Sudan. Um, I'm but, thirsty. but let's say the modern Charizard V Star of the newest set, you know, there's so much of it being printed. And Pokemon's already said, you know, they're going to keep printing things as long as they're popular and in demand. So we, we could potentially see a ton more reprints of, you know, like brilliant stars here in the future. But there's I mean, already dang, being dude. more of these Charizards being pulled, you know. So why not send these in to get graded? So now you have, you know, a large population of modern cards being sent in versus vintage. Unless you're grumpy, he's not getting So that's yelling. that's exactly what's going to happen. The vintage graded. are always going to I won't say always, but theoretically the vintage should continue to go up where modern is probably going to come plateau or even drop because there's going to be more yeah. submissions for it. 100%. And I also would say, so going down the road of talking investing, right? Um, I... <laughs> Fully stand by (laughs) investing in anything Charizard because I still think that, you know, those type of things are going to gain their value eventually. You know, how much? Who knows? But like, like if you could get your hands on Burning Shadow stuff right now, do it because, you know, the Charizard in that one was really hard to pull and had really terrible quality with the pulls. I pulled one. And how bad is the quality, Ren? Butter knife. (laughs) <laughs> so there you go but if you can get that set Don't practice your asmr spells in this here podcast just just like um <laughs> nice unbroken bonds my channel here. right you you you're not gonna guarantee yourself by you know opening a box that you're gonna pull a charizard you can almost right. guarantee yourself if you open a brilliant stars booster box you're probably gonna pull one of the five charizards in it so you know chances are very high with that 
I feel like they did reprints for those sets differently, though. And maybe it's just me. I, I don't have any kind of information to back up what I'm saying. But with it's Burning Shadows training. and then even um, Hidden Fates, I noticed it, too. Like, the more they reprinted it, it seemed like they, they printed less and less of the Charizards or, like, the big hitters in each set. So it became harder and harder mm. to pull them. I pulled like, my Charizard quick from Hidden Fates, so I didn't have to worry about any kind of repo. Right, exactly. <laughs> but I, so, like, I pulled two Charizards, um, excuse me, from Hidden Fates, like within the first month. And then as I kept reprinting them, you know, we got to the second, third, fourth, fifth reprint. I couldn't pull anything. I, you know, I was having a hard time even pulling just like some of your simple regular. Yeah, I mean, I haven't pulled the Charizard. I, so. We all know you had a hard time pulling the Cynthia. I didn't. I yeah, hard time pulling you, it because I never did pull it. You know what's crazy? <laughs> I probably I don't know how many packs I actually opened of Hidden Fates. I know I opened four ETBs, probably like close to ten of the triple packs and however many tins. I did not pull a Charizard, Charmeleon, or Charmander Shiny. Really? Arceus was looking down on me and was like, F that guy. I know <laughs> how much it would mean to him to pull one of those three. Absolutely not. <laughs> They're like, his I really shelves are see him crooked. I name. am not going to let him have any kind of leeway. He I didn't have this house at that time, man. Just sitting in his background all <laughs> willy nilly. Doesn't even pretty up the place before I talk too Is much that right? crap. But listen, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, though. Like, even with Burning Shadows. So I came in late to Burning Shadows. I was already, by the time I was buying um, ETBs is when they were having like the big clearances in Target and Walmarts on those ETBs. And and that's so crazy. I was buying buying those ETBs for like 20 bucks a pop, you know, and there was, I I think I even did a video on it. I went to uh, my local Walmart and there was like eight ETBs and I'm like, it's tempting. And I think I bought like six of them for 20 bucks each. I was telling my friend about it because, you know, he just got into it recently because of me. And so we were just talking about like, you know, shout out to Ricky Buster. Yeah. <laughs> but like <laughs> we were just talking about stuff and I was like, yeah, you know, it's so hard for me to want to buy stuff because it's all MSRP now. You know, when you, you know, now, not like last year, but I was like, um, he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, just I remember like every month or every other month, Best Buy would do like, you know, a dollar fifty off Pokemon packs. You know, so it was easy mm-hmm. to find packs for like a little over two dollars or like two dollars exactly. Um, Walmart had clearance sections. That was wild. You know, <sighs> dude. Like, all right. Listen, the Walmart clearance sections and the Target clearance sections were my <clears throat> favorite. When I first started getting into um, like my channel and actually creating content on opening Pokemon cards, I was down in shit. Alabama and I went to a Walmart there and that's where I found um I don't think you can see them. I got a double crisis pack up here, the double one. I found a bunch of those in some of the collector boxes there for uh, like half price. Yeah, and it's because nobody wanted them. It's funny because when I first got into the like trying to do the YouTube and all that kind of stuff, I had watched Nate go to Walmart and constantly just you know it was nothing to get these boxes for like ten or fifteen bucks, mm-hmm. and you know they they were junk boxes. Nobody wanted them. You know, like Ash's Greninja and all that stuff, like all those boxes. So that's what I started off with. And it just is crazy because it's like, it's funny. I remember for so long going to Walmart and being like, oh man, they don't got any new boxes. It's just all these crappy ones. I don't want these. And like, I would kill for a sale now, man. <laughs> like, Dude, I, Hidden Fates came out because Hidden Fates was like the first main set that I started opening when I got into it again. And um, I remember passing up on all the Unified Minds and the... Unbroken Binds and all that other stuff that was sitting on the shelf. And I just went all in on Hidden Fates. And now I'm sitting here going, man, I wish I would have bought those packs and stuff when I saw, you know, and had the opportunity because I didn't really open up very much of any of those sets. The one thing I, I wish really I had gone wish- less on Hidden Fates and, oh, you know, gotten more on some of the other stuff because, I mean, I had really quick luck and all the other stuff was just ended up being like, Oh, got this again. Got this. I'm not getting what I wanted. But, you know, that's right. the, that's the hindsight aspect of it though, too. Cause you don't really, you, you can't really go into planning, pulling all the good stuff from a, <laughs> you know, a set like that. The thing right is, is from my perspective though, for, I was, uh, I had decided pretty early on that I was like mm-hmm. ETBs, maybe some tins. And I wanted to make sure I got as many of a, uh, 
these things, the jumbo cards, because honestly, I like the jumbo cards more than most mm -hmm. of the actual cards because you can actually see the actual art for the card. And I actually like that's I'd actually be happier if I had the full set of jumbos versus any of these sets back here. And you can only get those primarily from the card sets. I really hate that you got the. I didn't get any of the Aeons, any of the oh, EV. Have you tried being better? I just tried not going you to the store. You just need Vaporeon, that's all. Waterion, yeah. yeah. No, I just. <laughs> one thing I wish, like, if I. Because this is something that I could control, right? So not the whole, I wish I could go back and tell my parents to buy. You know, base set booster boxes. <laughs> Don't live with any kind of those regrets. You can't go back and change it. You can only you accept who you are. All right. Anyways, um, Thanks, so I, I wish I could go back to basically. There's certain sets I don't regret not like I don't regret not getting certain booster boxes. Like I regret you Steve know, Siege. but I do wish <laughs> I had gotten a booster box of Evolutions because I do genuinely like that set. I just always pass it up, and I always meant to get one. Like, I always was like, oh, you know, not this month, because I already spent this much, and I don't want to add another $100, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just, I wish I had just done it and been like, boom, now I've got it, you know. Never going to open it, now I have it, you know. Um, I wish I had gotten a Burning Shadows box, too, because they were only, like, $100 then, and it just would be cool to have that just to know, you know, but I don't, so... Never gonna know. See, that's why I collect all the modern. Like, I've got every single Sword and Shield set uh, booster box sitting on my shelves now. And I always, so like when I go buy them, I get two of each. So I can keep one sealed and I can open one. And that's pretty much it. Because I didn't do that for any of the Sun and Moon or even um, X and Y series packs. I opened up some of them, but I never kept them sealed, you know. I regretting miss getting the mystery box. You know which mystery box I wish I regret getting? All of them. Oh, <laughs> you got the power cube. <laughs> well, I got two I, of those in my time. The one I did pick up the power cube. And honestly, I don't regret it because this was my, uh, for majority of my openings on my uh, amazing YouTube channel. So done segment, check it out on YouTube. Link down below. <laughs> um, uh, this is the storage for the carts that I pulled. Like, they would sit there in my center console. It ended up being a useful tool. The rest of the cards went off to A&C Packbuster and pals over there uh, for their uh, bulk. So, that was just the rest of it. The other side is you were talking about the push-in bottoms. I actually ended up being a victim of one of those. Didn't notice it until I got in the car that, oh, sh this the bottom's been pushed out and it's all been checked. Uh, so, I went back to try to return it. They're like, no, nah, you can't do it. You open it. <laughs> yeah, well, Walmart, Walmart. So I'm like, uh, mystery boxes. I'm good. Yeah, I bought. They're not the same as they used to be. So mystery they're not. Boxes I, bought, uh, I think I bought. I no, actually, you know what? I never bought the cubes. I had a friend buy me uh, a cube, and then I got a cube for Christmas. And neither one were like you know anything special. They did have some cool cards, and a lot of them were not vintage, but just cards from sets I had never you know would never probably be able to open. Like, I pulled a couple of evolutions that were pretty cool, but, um, yeah, they never really resulted in, like, they anything were, at all. They were never worth the value of what you paid, but no. they used to be better. Like, back at the end of 2019, I would even say the, the first half of 2020, you could get a couple decent cool, like, hollows or EXs, um, GXs in those. And they were they were decent enough, but you know, usually only amounted to like your value you actually got was only like two or three dollars versus the six seven you paid. But I think I did one of the power cubes last year that I saw at a, like a Walgreens, and it was just it was garbage. It was mostly garbage. modern like sword and shield sets, and your hits, your foil cards that you're guaranteed to get were basically hollows from the modern sets too. But not even like hollows, it was like reverse hollows. So you'd be getting a bunch of these <laughs> as your foil cards. And you're like, that is a huge slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. You used to actually get like holographics from older sets and EXs and GXs. And now you just get reverse hollows. See, when I opened mine, I think I would get a couple of hollows, but they were older hollows. But like, you know, obviously not like a Charizard. It was like, you know, 
I can't even think of anything to be honest. It's just you know basic hollows, like ones you're not like, like oh my god, like, promo you know, cars and stuff. You know, yeah, like, that from, too. I never got GX's though. Two thousand eight. I remember getting a dark ride camera of EX. Yeah, I just I mean I I, like look though, I never opened those products up and I wasn't into the TCG when a lot of those products were available. So to me, getting some cars like that, even if they were just regular holographic promos or something from like early two thousand or uh, late two thousands or early twenty tens was cool to me because I never had them. So I was getting stuff that I didn't have, but now it's like if you do it. You're, you're bound to get mostly just like hollow rares from new sets and reverses. And like, it's funny because I was just thinking about, um, I don't know if you got in on it, uh, Ren. I don't even know if Sudon did, but I know he would have known about it because I'm pretty sure we had that group chat going. But um, I was thinking about how like some of the older stuff would randomly recycle itself. Um, like I'm talking about like black and white era type stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, or like early XY, but Pokemon, um, like actual Pokemon Center, would randomly post um, like links, and you. This was kind of like before the bots really took over. So you basically, what would happen is somebody would just ho- you know happen to click on the link, and it would be like you can you know you can buy this, and then you know the word would spread. And I remember this was like mid twenty twenty, like we hadn't gotten this house yet, so it was probably. I'm pretty sure it was during the pandemic, but like the very start. And I forgot which tins it was. Um, it was like Yveltal and Xerneas, but I don't know. Oh, yeah, those XY tins. Yeah. Yeah. And they had nothing but XY and then one black yeah, they had and the, pack. It was the starter. It was the starter tins too. So the Chestnut, uh, Del Fox, and Greninja. Yeah. And that was crazy because I had never opened a black and white era pack. And I remember. Um, when they came out with these, I think there was a limit you could buy of like 10 or something. So it was a pretty crazy limit. And I know like it was to the point where I put in multiple orders. I never put in like orders of 10, but I think I got a total of like all of the set or all of the uh, tens of like, like I got like 17 total or 16 or something like that. And um, I just remember like grabbing some quickly and then like the next day they still had them. And then I placed a couple orders, but I remember doing an opening of it. Those were like, those were cheaper tins too. I think they were only like seventeen dollars as opposed to the twenty or twenty five they normally were too. Yeah, I think they basically were almost like putting on a slight sale to be you know be like let's clear out inventory. And then I mean it lasted a few days. That's kind of the wild thing. Mm-hmm. And then they had a base set X Y you could buy. Yeah, um, and it's like again these so these were the sleeve blisters. So when you got them, you got sleeve blisters. It wasn't like they opened a booster box and you know that was that. But it's just crazy to think back because Pokemon Center does that from time to time where just like all of a sudden random product will restock. Uh, We'll probably never see that type of product hit the stores again. I'm not going to say never, but like probably won't, you know. I think it's all going to be Sun and Moon era for the next year or so. And then once we get into Gen 9 stuff, then you'll probably start seeing like Sword Shield base being pushed out again. And yeah. And, And it's crazy because it's like, Obviously, I think another thing of what's going to happen going forward is at least from like the Sword and Shield era, you're going to have a lot of people who sat on product. So, you know, um, uh, they sell it to MJ's Holdings, and my or my you know will be correct. They or they might not know, even go that route. They might just hold it to sell themselves. Right. Well, I was going to say like, you know, flood the market with you know, hey, base set Sword and Shield is now worth two hundred dollars, and I have, I don't know, 10 booster boxes that I bought and sat on. So now my investment of $90 per box is now going to net me $110, you know, before sales. I I think we're kind of starting to see that a little bit right now, honestly. Um, So not, it's not hitting like retail stores, but I've just seen it on online stores, but a lot of uh, sun and moon era building battles coming back. Mm -hmm. Um. I think Lost Thunder, Crimson Invasion. There's been a couple others, but you know, people team are. Up. Yeah, I didn't. I haven't people, seen any team up. People are I've selling those um, earlier. Well, they're getting so supposedly it's a reprint. You know, like Pokemon just reprinted them and then sent them out to these uh, distributors, but they're selling them at high prices already. So you know, they yeah, they like over twenty five or whatever. Yeah, and a lot of these people are some thirty thirty five dollars. 
And I think what's happening is you got people who've been holding on to them as like investors or, you know, whatever are now pushing their product out now too. So you've got like a small group of people that are getting the small reprint that they did, but now you got a larger group of people over here that have just been holding the product now trying to sell it for 35, 40 bucks too. And it's Mm -hmm. just driving those prices up a little bit more. And, And that's the thing I'm just so curious on is like, is it actually them reprinting stuff? Because, like, why just the build and battle kits? You know what I mean? Because, like, in theory, if they're reprinting it for real, they also have to reprint the box. You know, because I mean? it sets people well, up to play. You want to give people a chance to play. Yeah, but isn't most of that stuff not playable? Yeah, it's out of rotation, so you can't play it in standard anyway. You have to play it in legacy. But- as long as it's available within the current set and legal, it can still be used. If the same card has the same playable. It right. should technically still be but usable. If that's the case, you would just reprint the current set that still has it, and, as opposed to print, reprinting an entire set for you know three cards. Which because you got to think most question. of these cards are not part of a legal rotation anymore. Hmm. But so the point kind of still stands, though, Grumpy. With why are they reprinting? You know, you know, certain so boxes or retail stores too. Like we said, it's been mostly ETBs. That we're seeing restocked on stores instead of like single pack blisters, collection boxes, three packs. Mm-hmm. Why you know well, like why are they doing those? In, at, here's yeah, like I just wonder. Well, like basically, could they all of a sudden be like, hey, you know how everyone was being weird about evolutions? Guess what? We're gonna reprint the hell out of that, and just really toss a wrench in you know in the problem because if you think about it, if they reprinted something like team up. Is a big one that's worth like what, like a thousand dollars a booster box or something now? Yeah, so um, ridiculous. Evolution, same thing. If they were to be like, you know what, we'll fix that. We're gonna reprint the hell out of it. That way, all the people who you know bought up all the stuff and you know raised the prices and stuff have all this product they're sitting on now and they can't do anything about it. That like but see, th- they have to, they have to um, put them on store shelves. They have to put them in retail store shelves. Otherwise, the problem doesn't fix itself. Yeah, because botters and stuff. Well, so I think what would happen again is like, let's say they just sent them out to online retail stores or distributors, sent them to only, you know, like cart, uh, local game stores, stuff like that. Um, you got people who've been buying up cases or boxes of, let's say, Team Up, for example, and they were paying, you know, $150 a pop. But now they're holding them. They want to sell them for three hundred. Well, these distributors are going to put them out there and saying, you know, sell these at MSRP. We're going to give you normal uh, distro prices, which is like sixty, seventy dollars a box. But they they already got these other boxes that they paid one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars for. Right. They're not going to they're not going to sit there and take a loss and put these out there for one hundred forty dollars. They're going to sit there and go, okay, the happy medium is two hundred dollars. So distro and Pokemon Center like. If they were going that route, their intentions are good, but the execution won't be there because people are greedy. Well, I just mean like if they even just put it on PokemonCenter.com, the only thing that sucks about that is their MSRP for like booster boxes is 144 or whatever. So but it's not even exactly if they, good. But. Even if they did that though, like that's that's still better because like you said, a team up box is a thousand dollars right now. Let's just say, for example, if Pokemon Center suddenly restocks them and everybody has access to those boxes at the MSRP price, then a definite better it, option than paying a thousand. Yeah, right, right. It, it'll it, they have to like these people that are holding onto these boxes for a thousand dollars. Either a can't list, they won't list them at that. They'll take them off and they'll hold them even longer. Or b they'll list them but drop the price drastically to meet the price of what's being put out there at MSRP. Right. And that's what I'm well, saying. So, if they're going to do a true reprint, they need to put them in retail stores, and they like they need to flood every single Walmart, Target, Meyer, GameStop, all your local card shops, all the online avenues, and all that. So that way, everybody has access to these products. Let's say three pack blisters, twelve ninety nine, or I think because of inflation now they're up to like fourteen dollars. Well, I'll compete. argue the fact that they're not doing this to combat the you know the the market at all. I think their mindset is because what, what, what have we seen the product that they release? Traditionally, ETBs and build and battle kits, both of which set up quick to play, yep. quick to set up. Which, here, 
Hold on. I, I, I'm seeing the frustration on Grumpy's face. He's ready to woohoo at me. He's but in attack mode. He's definitely all about to blow. All right. But the thing is, is their mindset is going, hey, we had this thing called the Build and Battle Stadium, or the Battle Academy, that was super successful. And it got a lot of people interested in playing the game. ETB set people up to play. You have two different sides that can play. That sets families up. That gets them selling to families and that gets more into more houses. What are they going to do? Oh, I can't use these cards to be the standard play. You, I want to get competitive. Well, I'll go start going to current events and start getting into current stuff, which is here's the line with the hook and the bait. Hooked them. Let's go. Now spend all your money, little child. All right? So the only reason I would argue, though, still is I don't understand why it would be worthwhile for them Let's to be re- friends. I'm just saying I don't why reprint these random products I my argument is that I think Sun and Moon especially right Sun and Moon they were probably overprinting stuff and basically just had overstock you know so now what you're doing you're seeing is these random ETBs because it's random ETBs too it's not even like you're seeing team up hitting the shelves and stuff like that you're seeing you know Sun and Moon base set and you know whatever like that type of stuff mainly like that's like the only ones i usually see sometimes evolutions and evolutions i know was heavily overprinted um for its time but i think it's just you you have these things that didn't sell and they're kind of just resurfacing and someone's like oh hey i forgot we had like 600 of these would you want to buy some we'll sell them to you at msrp or maybe slightly above msrp so instead of 20 we sold it to you for 21 and then they turn around and sell it to us for 25 or 30 because we're like holy crap it's basically vintage you know and you know, buy it up why would they just sell it to like companies like mj holdings who's just going to turn around and build the mystery boxes and then because i think everybody's to them, happy if i'm mj holding i don't want to buy that type of stuff to just open it and put it somewhere else and like repurpose it because if why you not? look at it they just resell too but i i'm just thinking if i'm mj holding i want to like buy stuff really cheap rather than buy something that is probably being sold at msrp at least like i imagine mj holding was taking a ton of bulk that people were selling and calling it mystery cubes and or oh yeah that's 100 cheap they were doing. yeah like or they were buying super or and or sorry they were buying super cheap you know like the the clearance boxes we were talking about opening Breaking them, them down yeah. and then you know repurposing the packs on the inside um, just think about it. Like not. you were getting a ton of those like Black Star promos that were, yep, readily available. Or like if they added a jumbo into it, it's a regular jumbo. Like you're not going to see, you know, this Charizard. You were probably more likely to get, the, you know, this Pikachu, where you're like, Bet. oh yeah, you know. Well, but it's because it, like even look back at, at some of the the mystery boxes we have opened in the past. A lot of the you know one card foil card you get are Black Star promo and like. The one that comes to mind um, is that Luxray from like the 20, it was some 2011 or 2012 set, but it was a promo that came out of a three pack blister. So they 100% do that. They just, they take in all the, they buy in cheap stuff on clearance or they take, I've heard of them buying um, people's collections, um, bulk stuff, but buying mm-hmm. it super cheap. And I think they can get away with that because they could buy a great quantity of them at a time at a, a decent price. So, you know, people Which are probably more argument, likely though, going right? to take lesser well, price for it. See my, my thing with the build and battles though, the reason why I kind of think we're seeing a lot of build and battles is I thought build and battles were really cool. And I got into like the idea that you could get them early. So it was cool to try to get those for that early release type stuff. I never actually got them early, but I was like, Oh, you know, I'll buy a couple. Cause you know, these ones might have cool promos, whatever. And, Usually I didn't know the promos up until like I had already made the purchase. So then it was like, oh, okay, whatever. It's not a big deal. They're 20 bucks or actually that's not even true. Most of the time I was getting them for like 15. Um, but then, you know, like you got ones that actually had the Charizard in it, like um, Vivid Voltage. And that was like, okay, you actually want the build and battles because, mm-hmm. you know, they have a chase card in it. Um, but I think these ones, these particular sets, don't have those specific chase cards. Now, I'm not saying they don't have nice cards in them or anything. I have no idea what they are. I just know it's not Charizard. So for me, I'm personally not going to be like, oh, man, I really want this. 
Like I know Zen's been, them out. <laughs> right. I, I know Zen's been buying them up because, you know, Zen is smart enough to know that, you know, they will go up in value because they're much older sets. But I'm just like, eh, like they're already above MSRP. So that kind of turns me off. And it's like, you know, stuff I'm not so worried about. Like if it were booster boxes hitting, you know, these guys online shelves, then I'd be a little bit more like interested if it were like, oh, it's $100 or $120 for this you know lost thunder booster box i'd be like oh okay yeah like that'd be a lot more you know of a purchase i would consider but for these building battles it's kind of like eh like i think i think what it is is just it, this is my back opinion stock. again yeah it's it's someone had a ton of back stock they just realized they had and they're like oh damn realistically uh, you know, on the realistic you. side of me thinks that that's that's the case here is that they they just have all this okay. stock and that Everybody they have getting up on suit on. Well, well listen, just, listen, listen. Trash. Trash. If you were Pokemon Center, why didn't it hit their site? Because exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but when have you seen building I, battles so ever hit their site? Realistically, though, I think that is the know, case. It's just it's just a bunch of back stock that people are finding that they can't hold on to, and they have to you know liquidate essentially. But I think. I would want to have hope that Sudan's method is correct, though, because if you think about it, their, their player base is what's going to keep them in it in the game for a long time. It's not going to be the, yeah. the collectors and investors. It's the players because well, collectors and investors are going after vintage or older products where players always want the newer stuff. Just like Joe Campbell. Get well, I, I would say the thing is, though, obviously Pokemon is who printed it. So that was their original intent with printing the product, you know? And they printed a lot of it because, you know, I would say the beginning, like early sun and moon, I think there was another drought of, hey, you want to collect Pokemon and play the game? And you Well, just, and I think that's what they're trying to avoid, too. You know, they don't want to ever have that situation again. Oh, and that's why I think now you see favorite. Charizard like every other set, you know, or also, right, but they've been see, doing crazy the thing cards. With Charizard is, is they're usually not like. They're playable, obviously, but they're never like top tier decks. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like every say, say say at minimum it's every three sets. That means every third set is probably going to sell heavily. So then you know you don't have to worry about like the other two sets. Say they do bad, like Battle Styles, for example. Battle Styles is a set that I think is great from a you know player perspective. I'm not a player, so I can't speak specifics on that. I'm just saying like there's not. A ton of chase cards for the grand community, aka Charizards, right. Pikachu's, that type it's of thing. That you know, it's one hundred percent a player set. And I, I mean, like, I would love to get the Tyranitar card. There's a bunch of. I'm sure there's other cards I would like to get. I literally have never bought Battle Styles simply because I was like, eh, like it's not that great that I'm going to buy it. Right now, I have considered buying it since because you can get it as low as like eighty dollars. But yeah. you know, I'm not going to like. I, to be fair, I haven't even bought Brilliant Stars, though. So, you know, it's not like I'm really just chasing the Charizard. Like, I'm probably just going to buy the Charizard cards and call it a day. But right. it's like, I think if now, right, they do that where it's like, okay, we put really cool cards in every single set. So every single set, we have a chase card, like the Tyranitar, uh, the Galarian Birds and Chilling Rain, plus a bunch of others. Um, I mean, Evolving Skies was like a ton of chase cards, even though they're not Charizard. Um but it's like every few sets, they're still going to make a Charizard set or have a Charizard card in it, even if it's just a hollow. Like when you think about it, Vivid Voltage was just a hollow, but a lot of people wanted that Charizard hollow. Um, obviously, the really Pikachu was really cool and a bunch of other stuff. But I'm just saying, like, I think now they also try to combat their drought by not letting the drought last that long. Now, I think Brilliant Stars yeah. has been very interesting because they really, 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 really diluted the set with charizard like i love charizard five charizards is kind of a lot so it's like okay you know it, it i miss the days when it was just like you might get an alternate art you got a uh ultra rare maybe like the full art and the rainbow i hate the rainbows now but that's just because they make really cool full arts but it's like you figure they did a regular v an alternate art v the v star an alternate art V again, or is that a V? It's not even a V Max. Yeah, it's just a V. And then the Hyper Rare. So you got five Charizards. Like, why? Well, you don't need looking, that. Looking back at like 
um, Burning Shadows, there was only two Charizards in there. You know, that you had the regular Charizard right. GX, and then you had the Rainbow. And that's like, those were the, cha that's why the Rainbow Charizard GX was sought after so much because you only had two Charizards to chase. And the one was the one you really wanted, the Rainbow, not the regular one. Right. So there wasn't, it was, you know, you go big or go home. But or now it's like, we're just kind of giving everybody a chance to pull a Charizard of some kind, you know. It Everybody gets wrong. to go home a winner. <laughs> they made it so that, like, for example, the 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 alternate art one for English, um, the one with Venusaur on it, is really hard to pull. Mm -hmm. I've only seen a couple people that have pulled it more than once, um, and really not that many people have actually pulled it. For like, I think Zen still hasn't pulled it. You figure Zen's probably opened at this rate at least a hundred plus packs or more. Well, I, I know it's like a case or something. Yeah, I was going to say, it's definitely over 100 plus, now that I think about it, because 36 per booster box, and I know he's oh, opened yeah. at least like four or five booster boxes. So Come on, math man. <laughs> but it's just funny, because it's like, that's the one Charizard he hasn't pulled. And, you know, don't get me wrong, obviously, it's just completely luck, right? Um, but it's I mean, I've funny. opened up a booster box and an ETB, and I've already gotten, I think, three of the five Charizards. Right. I know, like, the regular V and then the V-Star are not that hard to pull. And then the other V that's like a teal blue is the full art. Well, one of the full arts, yes, is not that hard to pull, but it's well, still the full art, not the alternate art. Right. But I don't know. It's just interesting because I'm like, I don't know if that's their intention is to try and, you know, dilute the whole thing. I don't know. I, I, I don't see. I don't know either. I don't, I don't know what their, their whole. Meow. Excuse Meow. me. All right. Well, the raceway is on. <laughs> that was a bit aggressive. I'm like, I'm going to say I haven't opened up any Brilliant Stars, and I know when I do, I'm going to pull whatever I need to pull, and it'll probably be Charizard that y'all want. I just want to pull the Cynthia. I, honestly, like, I will buy most of the alt arts because I don't really hold myself on pulling them in, in like the trainer gallery cards the ones i want i'll end up buying singles but i the one card i really want to pull is the cynthia's card the cynthia's ambition just so i can break that drought i can finally pull it and just be done isn't it um pretty cheap yeah it's like a ten dollar card but it it's it's a personal i have to pull it i need to i probably will buy it as a oh, single too, but i need to pull it don't don't fall into that cliche. I have to pull it. No, no, no. I wouldn't. I have, I have to pull it. It's been spring winds. well. If you think about all the sets that she's been in, I have not pulled her as a as a card yet. I'll pull her. <laughs> I don't. I you don't probably I will, and I'm gonna be upset. The only one that I had that Cynthia was in it was it for. Was, what was, um, was it Shining Light or uh, Shining Legends? Legends? I don't hit face. No, I got no, two of it's, those. Um, it's um, there was one in Ultra Prism. The Ultra Prism one, yeah, that's this one that. Well, I, Ultra I, Prism I or Lost Thunder, I can't remember now. Well, is one geez, of those. I asked then, you. Then Hidden Fates, and now Brilliant Stars. We should move on. <laughs> well, you don't want to talk about Cynthia no more. No, because I I know I will well, help pull you. <clears> we can except for in our battle. We can wind things down a little bit, you know, come back from our uh, soapboxes and tirades here. And uh, we got a, a couple new products to uh, show Let us there. know who's coming. wrong and who's right. I'm right. Dr Grumpy's wrong. Yeah, About give us what? your opinions on the market and <laughs> what you should do. <laughs> but before we show products, should we uh, talk the Pokemon Go? No, never. I just I already had it pulled up, so I was gonna just show that. First. Wait, oh, the uh, the Aloha lights thing. Uh, we don't even Festival know. of Colors. Yeah, yeah, I was close. I was close. So this I'm sitting here starts. going, what Pokemon? <laughs> Go? <laughs> so for those of you who still play Go. Pokemon Go, uh, Tuesday, March fifteenth, ten a.m. local, we'll start the Festival of Colors, where Oracorio is introduced. The four forms. Uh, I'm not sure how you say that first one. Is it Bailey? Yeah, I'm not sure. Bale, Bailey, uh, style, pom pom style, Paiu style, and <laughs> Sensu <Paiu>. style. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you're still playing, definitely check that out. Looks pretty cool. Says, if you're uh, like me, you're just going to call them the red, yellow, pink, and blue forms. 
Right. Or if, um, you're gonna be, if you're familiar with Grumpy's lives, he says his names wrong all the time. Hunch crow. This is, this is true. There's Hunch also, crow. if you look right here, uh, take a few snapshots every day during the event for a surprise. I wonder which surprise it is. Looks like the you're probably uh, gonna get smear girl. No, you're probably oh. gonna get um, a different variation of the Oricorio. Uh, it's just a know, Pikachu man. with a freaking new hat. It it definitely looks like. Smear it's the same here, icon that they use for all of them. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, you know what? Actually, here's here you go. Here you go. Right here, the Bailey style, or however you say that, will be in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Pom pom style in the Americas. Paiu style in African, Asian, Pacific, and Caribbean islands. And then finally, the Sensu style in Asia Pacific. So that's actually how you get the different ones. Um, so there you go. We're so us in the United States. You take a picture. A snapshot of something you're gonna get the pom pom style or a choreo. I'm calling it now. And you know, you just gotta complete the challenge. That's how you get uh your, your or a choreo. Um and Some also research. you can get wild encounters. Um and then here's all the shinies of the basics. Um yeah so and then here's the raid breakdown for those of you who care. Ooh three star raids you can get a shiny drudogen. That's actually a, a shiny I would really want. So I will. I will likely open the app maybe once a day just to check things around me and then close it and probably not. I might it. accidentally tap on the icon because I do that once in a while. <laughs> it's right. It's right next to the bank app. <laughs> I and then too, actually. <laughs> also to throw Ren off because I know he's uh he's not expecting this to talk about the Digimon Fest that's happening. Uh. D d d d there's a bunch of digimon fest happening through europe um so yeah they're pretty much doing a lot of yep. their tournaments right now trying to get their their setup of worlds going on but here yeah, are the cards too. you can get um this lilithmon looks actually insane i have um, that lilithmon just not with the stamp on it i was it gonna say you get stamp. the stamp on it which is pretty cool um and then also they were showing for uh, which one is this one? I don't know. I don't know where this is releasing specifically, but more stamped ones. Um, no, I mean, cool. it would be cool to get it stamped cars, though. You know, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. That Rosemon? Is that the Rosemon you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah, Traxmas pulled that one. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's actually kind of sweet, yeah. It's like, like um, two weeks ago I'll, in Japan. I did see that they, they stole the whole, like, trainer gallery idea from Pokemon. But they yeah, did a they, better job. They've got a bunch of uh, the fests going on. I was kind of looking at it before we started the recording, and each one is like at different times. But it looks like they start this month. So like Italy's is in uh, is the thirteenth, um, which is technically today. Sort of uh, Norway was technically yesterday, definitely yesterday for us recording because they're ahead of us. So yeah, um, but one of them I looked at was supposed to be in like uh, December. So. That's a long ways away. I know, right? Um, also, Ren, didn't you have some flesh and blood tidbits for us? Um, pro. Yeah, it was just it was a funny the thing pro that tour with pro. the uh, yeah the pro quest tour. Do they do they LARP at they, these events? I hope not. Honestly, I can't tell you one way or another because I've never been to one because I'm not professional in this game. He's a whispering LARPer. He needs to be better. Yeah, it, it'll never. Ha I will never achieve that. If, if Ren can become pro, what he should do for us in the podcast is create jerseys that we can wear with his name. <laughs> yeah, would it say Ren or would it say Flanders in the name bar? Um, probably Flanders. All right. It could say like R Ren on the Flanders. front and then Flanders on the back. You know, what number would you choose? Forty. Why? That's always been my number. What, like for every sports team I've ever played for, that's been my number. Seventeen. That's an odd choice. Why is that not choice? What would your number be? Seven. Why? For the greatest quarterback of all time, Ben Roethlisberger. I, that's not John Elway. Number. <laughs> I, I said the name. So. Anyway, this pro pro quest <laughs> tour. It was the semifinals, and something happened that's never happened before, which is um, fans showed up. People hey, played the game Flesh and Blood. <laughs> you got, got oh. <laughs> I got some choice words for you, Sudan. Um, it's no, better than medicine. One of, 
There was a guy who was playing uh, Kano as his character and beat his opponent before his opponent even had a turn. So literally turn zero, he bur- he beat his opponent, which has never happened before. And it's crazy, insane luck that it even happened that way. So it was just, it was really interesting. It was kind of crazy to see. He's but, like, I don't even have to face you. I just set my deck yeah, down I, and you're done. What do you do? You're <laughs> in the semifinals of a pro tournament. Stips and morning. you're sitting there and you haven't even gotten your turn yet because the other guy goes first and he just obliterates you. And you just, like, what do you do? You just sit there and you're like, okay, well, that happened. I, I guess I retired. You asked for a mulligan? <laughs> He's like, I'm the captain now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such things don't exist in flesh and blood, though. Yeah. Flesh. M- mulligans or reshuffles? Which one? Both. Because no matter what cards you pull, you can play. Hmm. Whatever that means. It so it's means not it's like, not broken except like for Pokemon, you have to have energies, or move. like in Magic, you have to have lands or mana, you know, to play mm. certain cards. Whereas Flesh and Blood, you you use the cards in your hand, no matter what they are, to power up other cards to play. So you're okay. saying they made it easy. You know what? You try playing Flesh and Blood suit on, and you let me know how easy it was It was a genuine question. I mean, <laughs> no, it, you have, that makes it harder, honestly. Energies, and you have to seek out items. Hi, me. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you have to do that, technically that puts on a... A strategic level higher than, oh, not I really. In the first turn, I, go look back at the Reshazard deck where you had oh. the uh, fire energy acceleration, where you could literally in like one turn put like four energies onto a Pokemon. You can't do that in Flesh and Blood. Where's oh, hold on? Where's one of my cards? Where's one of my? Okay, you guys are getting about to get a lesson. So up here in this corner is the cost of what it be the big picture right now. So this is that um, way nobody sees what he's doing, and it's just this is, don't do it. <laughs> this actually has a zero cost, so it's not a great example. If it was say it was three, you could you have to look at your resource cost down here. <laughs> God, I can't stand you guys. I saw it. I saw it down on the bottom, but I was like, I'm not, I'm not reading it yet. You know what? It's because you guys suck at all games you play. I don't play games, man. Exactly, because you suck. I probably would. It requires reading and stuff. <laughs> I hate that. That's I why I play like games, games man. I, I'm not good at like any of them, but I like playing them. Now, what's the win- what's what's the winners get for winning the winner? Well, I believe there's cash prizes to win. You get cards that are generally worth like, you know, thousands of dollars. Um, there's like gold cards they make that you only get if you're a tournament winner. Um, Are they as cool looking as the Digimon? They're even better than the Digimon. Although I will say the Digimon ones are pretty sweet. I can't I can't argue that. But um, for this Pro Quest tour, like everybody who wins is automatically considered like a professional player. Now you get put in that category. And- <laughs> I mean, you, I said, you get invited. You don't, you don't have to play to get into any other tournaments. You're automatically invited to tournaments and all that. If I got into Flesh and Blood and like my first thing, I went and won and became like the representative of my state. Would you be jealous? I'd be happy for you, actually. <laughs> I wouldn't really be jealous because I don't really go out and play. So none of none of the game stores around me. Um, he wakes up in the middle of the night, runs over him with a pillow. I knew this day would come. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> it's like teach me your ways. <laughs> Sudan, you're not supposed to tell my my tips and tricks to people. I know all. This is how he beats his competition is by taking them out. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you can't beat them, kill them. Golly. <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding, guys. Yeah, but, we don't, yeah, we no, don't so, agree with violence in this world of what did I just type? Well, this That's world funny. has way too much violence already, so we don't need any more. All right. But moving so, on and moving on. <laughs> new, new, new set. I will got- not, not a new set, but a new box, which I I am going set. to buy. This is probably going to be one of the boxes where I buy one to open and one to keep sealed. Why? And this box huge. that we're talking about is the Cleavor V Star Premium Collection box. Yeah, I guess it would help if I mention what it is. <laughs> yes, yes, for our, our lovely audio side, it, which it's going so to release May twenty seventh, uh, supposedly. 
Yeah. Um, I don't think it shows how many packs it's coming with yet, but um, we might get lucky with the new Astral Radiance see, set. One, two, three, four, five, six, roughly, maybe. Potentially. Six. So I could see this being, you know, a $30, $35 product too, you know. Oh, it does say right there. So you get one oh. etched foil promo card featuring featuring Cleavor V. You Let's get another one. one of V Star Cleavor. This one. All this information is available on the Pokey Guardian. You also get the oversized we card. Um, what's that say? Collector's again. pin. There's a pin. Oh, I didn't even realize there was a pin in there. Um, oh, you get a is it a pin, premium a coin? The V Star counter. Yeah, it's a premium. If it's uh, premium, yeah, it usually right comes there, with right. all of the things. Right there. You know what I wish that they would do for boxes like these that I noticed in the um, Pokemon Center ETBs they started doing, which I loved, is they started putting little deck boxes in there, like the the hard plastic deck boxes that you can fold the flap over and it, it like Velcro shut. I would like to see them do more stuff like that in these boxes. You know what you should do? The problem it poses with that is the countries, like the, the European countries, the... They uh, they they have plastic re uh, requirements that like you can only have certain. They don't they don't get the figures that we do. Or wait, they get the jumbos versus getting the figures, right? Because the whole plastic restrictions in there. So and that's usually, well, that, as I said, the European cr countries. I'm yeah, and I'm saying they can. I just like that. So they already European. they already make like exclusive boxes or you know different variations of boxes for each region. They should be able to. Shouldn't be any problem to put, you know, like a deck box in the North American version versus the European version, but who knows? I like it when they give you the full art with, like, the genuine cards. So they kind of give you a playable set with this do when they, these, they yeah. do these. See, I wish <clears> they <throat> kind of, I wish they would make them more. I, see, it's like a double-edged sword because I want them to do more things to make them for players and, you know, people that want to go out and play the game, especially with them opening up physical tournaments again, which that happened. Uh, I think some states physical have already opened up, you know, in, in store play. Um, but I guess you have ETBs and such for all of your play needs. Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> you know what I'm more excited for? <laughs> this Pokemon <laughs> Go set. Oh, I'm still... Is skeptical. Yeah, you be a hater. I don't care. You're still going to buy it. I know that much. I, you're July, right. I, I want to look, look, July 1st, ladies and gentlemen, is when this set is going to hit the streets. We're all going to be blown away. Okay? You got these products. You got the Pokemon oh, the Go. Elite. This is going to be like an actual <laughs> set. Yeah, you figure you got a an holiday elite, set. Elite, elite uh, trainer box, the exclusive, a regular elite trainer box, a premium mm -hmm. collection box, Special collections, collection, tin, Pokeball tins, <laughs> mini tins, V battle decks, including a bundle version, premier deck holder collection, and pin collections. Uh, yeah, and so, the new car! Yeah, so here, I mean, pretty much they got everything in there. So they got... The, the, the one thing that makes me want to collect these right here is those, those team pins. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to lie, those... But there's cheaper ways to get those out there, you know, than you're cheaper. Boxes. Yeah, I am. But I am being pretty is, cheap. Right honestly, now. it is pretty cool that they're coming out with this. Finally, I've seen a lot of people say that this is five years too late. But I think the thing is, when they came out with Pokemon Go, how, how could you predict that Pokemon Go was going to blow up like it did? You know what I mean? I would say well, that's been their future that they had to have the vision for it to get it this far. So they had to have known that it was going to have some success. Here's the thing is we haven't seen any of the cards. Are they actually going to be uh, just straight up images from I can see like the, the, the team leaders and stuff like that. I'll see that we have the professor. Obviously, we know what the professor's research card looked like. But are the rest of the card going to be AR photos? But see, I that's think, that's yeah. where I think it could be really cool if they take. So, like I said before in previous podcasts, they've done AR photo challenges. The only thing I think if they were going to do that, they should have done it knowing this was going to be like, hey, we're creating a set. Send us some of your best throughout the years AR photos. 
But they've they've could have been doing that all along when they've done all their send us your AR photos online. They I could have been saying, hey, maybe this is going in a new car. Maybe that's what they're collecting all these photos for. A hundred percent totally you bad know, they want to know about our lives because they're taking all our data. <laughs> I a hundred percent agree that that could be so the case. And that still would be cool. It just would have been cooler to like have known. But I think I, I kind of disagree though about the idea that they like have planned out Pokemon Go because if you think about it, like throughout their whole time they've kind of acted on a whim with stuff with a lot of things. Well, yes and no. So, so some that. smaller level things, yes, but think about raids. They introduced raids. That was something they planned on doing from the start, and they plan Pokemon let them do it when they started partnering with them because they said they had planned to do that from as early as like 2012. In, so in the main battle Pokemon. When so Pokemon yeah, really the Sword and Shield games. Gigantamax is their vision of what they had, you know, almost 10 years prior, and they tested it allegedly with Pokemon Go. Allegedly. I don't think it's allegedly when they've come out and said it. <laughs> yeah, they so. came out and said it. They didn't show you proof of the ideas, though. That's huh. like, we want to say this just so it. Ren can have a point. I, yeah, I'm just saying. This seems too convenient for Ren. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, people. Here we go. But we can so grumpy announced that we team. picked on him too much, so it's your turn. I mean, it's fine. It's it is what it is. I'm a big boy, so oh, I can handle grumpy. it. <laughs> I just want to see what these cards look like, though. I that's honestly going to be the biggest factor on whether I actually go in and buy some of the set or if I just buy one product and kind of skip the rest. You know what would be cool is if this set also almost introduces new features though like for example surely they're gonna well i was gonna say even like something to do with the gyms because why wouldn't they you know like that is a huge thing in pokemon go the gyms what if and i'm just literally spitballing here i there could be nothing to it people yeah (laughs) um speaking of what if kicked off the bus for doing that in like kindergarten Bro, you were a same. bad kid. Same. Yo, well, then my Nana got mad at the bus driver and came on the bus apparently the day they were kicking me off. It was all, you want to see spitball? She hit her with a spitball. <laughs> no, but she threatened to. And there's two old ladies, so this would have been funny. <laughs> You're so ADD. What if they introduced the mechanics of, you remember back when um, e-reader cards came out? You could no. have the e-reader. No. And obviously your cards had like the little scan thing and you could swipe them through and it would put those Pokemon in the game or whatever. What if they do some kind of like QR code type for the Pokemon Go? Yeah. I don't know how they would do it, what they would do, how they would implement any kind of features of it. But what if Pokemon PTCGO Go? What if that's (laughs) the the reason they're making a Pokemon Go set to do something to enhance Pokemon Go? Like when they start to get to the end of its um, life. You Come kinda, that, kinda, uh, go ahead, Sudon. Pokemon Go kind of seems like it's coming to the end of this life. They just released the Lolin Pokemon, which 90% we already had three years ago. You know, with the Geodudes, the other ones. The Pokemon yeah. Ones. But, but you got to you think know, that they, they got to change the mechanics up at some point. They got to do something different because the. Let me the, go it, through a freaking staining. Pokeball at the face of Bidoof and have him make that same. I don't even think they've legend. released all of Gen 3, have they? There's like one or two like legendary. Still Gen, not released. Gen Gen five and Gen six still haven't gotten all their Pokemon to release. Kecleon hasn't been released yet. There's Apparently a lot of they know. still has to be released. But... Obviously they know, but it's just like, damn man, you can, you're just jumping all around. Like we're probably gonna they get want Gen to make it a special event. But I'm with friend. Like it, it would be cool to see them do something that would incorporate to make it actually relevant again, so to speak. Cause you know be for me as a level 40 plus player, I don't really care. Anymore. Well, you got to think Whoa. like, what do people Whoa. do in the game anymore? <laughs> like nobody, nobody gets on. Well, I don't, obviously there's people that get on and still play it, but the popularity of the game in like the, the <sighs> hardcore player base has obviously decreased drastically in recent times. So what are they going to do to keep, people interested in the game and keep playing you know um so what if instead of giving you code cards for ptcgo live each code was a redeemable item within the game you get five pokeballs if they've done that I, if they did that that'd be game. stupid but i'm saying like maybe like redeemable like 
outfit pieces and like stuff like that. You know, how mad would you be if you lost a code card versus that? You mean like instead of I getting think code that we would see the PTCGO, enough, you got for that like an, an item like that. I think you'd see more people upset the same way we saw with like, oh god, they put a V star in the place of the energy. We're gonna we're we're gonna riot. You know, I haven't seen that many people I, upset about that though. It's it was well, and there's show. always people that are gonna be upset over the the slightest <laughs> little on the so, thing. Don't tell me what to do in my life. So I would say. <laughs> I would say the difference is you could market this as being also for Pokemon Go, and then people wouldn't be able to cry about it. I mean, people would still cry, but I also don't think they would do that simply because that would be taking more away from you know Pokemon's player base, even if it's just online, and they probably don't want to do that. Now, they could put out two codes, and you know, one is for a pack and one is for that. Um, cause I kind of feel like it's weird that they would completely just make a Pokemon go card set and not have it in any way, shape or form tied back to the Pokemon go game. You know what I mean? <laughs> what Bro, we get it, man. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like they have to do something to get people back into Pokemon go. And I feel like this would be a really good opportunity for them. It's a good opportunity for them to do a lot of different things, but I think I feel like they there's a lot they could do to to get people back into it to want to play again. And I'm just I'm curious just, to see what they actually I, do. I was gonna say I'm I'm not even so much worried about like that type of stuff as much as I am just seeing the set because I'm really curious. Like, okay, you figure right? They totally could take like you guys were saying AR photos that we have submitted. That would be cool. If they did it, do they make them just hollows or do they make them full arts or alternate arts for that matter? Trainer gallery style. So you know how the trainer galleries had the border on the outside and they still had the text box and stuff, but it was like the whole card is still part of the picture. They could do that with the AR because if you think about it, your phone is elongated. So you could put all your text and stuff in there while still having it be like. This is big brain thoughts here. Yeah, see, I'm telling you, maybe they should hire me. No, I don't think so, but yeah, probably so it's probably not a good investment choice, but you know, I'm putting it Did out you there. You communicate better with them than you do us because you're so busy with your well. So, if family. they hire me, then yes, I would communicate with them probably a thousand times. We hired you. Later. Um, I don't get paid, so technically, he hired it's, hired, us. it's paid in love. Actually, you know, since you and I really were the uh, the brain power behind with this our, with our Mount Rushmore spots. <laughs> <laughs> would you, you need a time out for a second no 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 we're good i'm just we have some funny business here <laughs> all right this look, one right here you know you know i think it's uh <clears throat> do -do -do -do, top four pickups of the week do -do -do -do. <laughs> we should uh, this actually is probably a good time to be like if anybody out there listening to our podcast has any kind of musical talents and wants to put a little jingle Red on for will us. I will pay you in kind words. What was that? <laughs> what was that? I, it didn't even play for me, so I have no idea. <laughs> what was that? Let me see if it'll play again. That sounds like me in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Hey, time for pickups of the week. Ooh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to create a jingle for us, just Go ahead and do that. Otherwise, Grumpy's just oh going to keep God. doing this every time. Who wants to start? Sudan wants to start, I think. I have garlic powder. <laughs> nice. That's California Kroger blend. Brand? Is that Kroger brand? It is Kroger brand. Nice. Kroger. It's, got, it's, got, it's got sorted spices to create the perfect blend of herb and spices that add zest to almost anything. It means it's got garlic and parsley. Nice. I don't buy things. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I bought a car. We need to get a Good new job. car video. When I get the car. Yeah, we Why don't you drive that up in your room and, uh, and show <laughs> us? <laughs> you right should be wall. like, right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ren, you and no, I, I, I am, uh, 
you, nothing's coming out, so no money. Well, I got a couple things. They're not really. My name's Red. Look at me. I'm Red. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I got this right here. So I'm gonna be doing a ASMR video on this. So if you guys oh, are Jesus, ASMR on Legos. Are you becoming the Lego <laughs> Whisperer now? Dude, I love these Legos. These little Harry Potter books are the sweetest thing ever. Is that the one you made they're one books. time and they're doing like a potions class or something? Yeah, they have six different ones. And I've that's only, that's cool. my second one. But there were seven books. They're not about the, it's about the school lessons. This one's the Defense Against the Dark Arts. Yeah, didn't you just well, hear me, Sudo? And I said the other one was they potions have potions, class? they have charms. I think they have a Transfiguration one. I'm not sure what else, but I also got, um, I know you guys don't care about it so much, but OPG <laughs> NHL cards. It's a new set. I saw it. I grabbed it before the scalpers could buy it. That all feels out. like a slur. I don't think we should let that be shown. <laughs> OPG. <laughs> Bruh. Um, <clears throat> I know Sudan's going to have a heart attack here, but I have actually gotten into starting to play Magic a little bit. They have an oh my online, God. online game, so I got... Mm. Walmart was selling these um, arena decks, which is basically like two decks and an online code card for like five bucks. So I bought some of those. Um, Why would I have I'm, a heart attack? I mean, just because that's your weird you love magic, magic so I guess. So much. Um, I've got two uh, two additions to my trainer binder. I'm going to be putting in. Cool. And if you guys well, didn't did know, fun, the lady. Fun little fact: my uh, my avatar art that I had created for me is based off of this character right here, the coach trader. Plagiarized a card? Yeah, completely. It's... Look at the finger stance. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, she did a real commission on it, so... That's really awesome. Awesome. If she, uh... If there's any kind of suing going on, direct it to her about me. It's um, good to see you have a lady in your life. <laughs> yeah, my rented family is uh, sleeping right now, so... Is it the same kid? If you find out, let me know! <laughs> Next time in Sudan's Mysteries. <laughs> Did you have more to show, Ren? No, that was all. All right. He's, it's like, hurry up. I need to show my fun coast. Oh, Lord. It's, Here we go. Oh, this right. is a terrible sign. He's the all Zen right. of the week. Zen <laughs> of the week. All he right, gets so, the Zen award. <laughs> He's said all right <laughs> four times already, so I'm not I'm not so sure. I, all right. So first of all, <laughs> five. I got the uh, Cora Cora magazine. I actually got the actual magazine. Um, Wait a minute! Which, that's one magazine. Yeah, that thing is. Think about it. It's all. Cool. It's funny though, because look how small it is, like size wise, but it's really thick. That is a your hand. Look, and so like it's like basically kind of like a manga. Oh, I gotcha. I guess. I mean, I can't read it because it's in Japanese. But uh, yeah, you don't read anyways. Also true. <laughs> so I got that. Shout out to Steel Sand Gaming. Uh, big fan of the podcast, but also a good friend to most of us too. Um, some Funko pickups. I got this Hot Topic exclusive nice. Red Hulk. Um, Do you know his which, real name? Uh, Hulk. Bruce Banner. General Ross. Ren sure. will appreciate this because me and him are actual Harry Potter fans. Do. Um, Bucket Harry Potter was pretty fans, cool. Because Sudan's not a Harry Potter fan. Um, You're not a talent. I did buy also two... Of these Rise of the Unison Warrior Dragon Ball Super sets. Now, oh, I'm going to return one of them. The reason I bought two is because I bought the one and then the price dropped by like $5. And my inner tightwad was like, whoa, we're going to buy another and we're going to return the other one. So, oh, no, seriously, for five bucks? Yeah. And you just gave it. away your plans so now they can find out. I don't care. And uh, then I got these Thai cards golly why is the focus just like having a freaking meltdown wiggle it. Right now? the glare wiggle it eh. I like that. all right but anyways <laughs> so i got the charizard i got the blastoise nice. and the venusaur the best um, to eat and then i won't go through all of these i will show oh wow yeah. i will show a bunch of them just like this but i got a bunch of metazoo uh reverse hollows um one is really cool I already showed you guys, but this one reminds me so much of Harry Potter. I do like oh. that one. I'm not even gonna lie. Harry and Potter the anime. It's uh it's illustrated by Chris Campman. 
No, it's really probably just Chris Campman. But uh, he's the one we had on the podcast a while ago. One um, of our guests. And yes. then, um, so these ones were from Nightfall. Um, I got the Beastie Bash, which I thought was just really cool. It's, you know, a lot of them, like, hanging out. And then the other promo, um, it's like the Beastie Halloween they're all dressed up. I thought those were really cool, so I grabbed those. Oh, and this boogeyman. This boogeyman it's probably worth cool. you know having for the long run, you know. Well, I kind of just thought they were cool, and they're actually really cheap. Like I really didn't spend that much on all these cards, and I got like close to fifteen of them or something. So you know, it's like a very cheap investment, even though I got a bunch of cards. So I felt pretty good about that. But yeah, that's uh, the majority of my pickups. I mean, I definitely got some other stuff, but I'm not going to show you every single Funko. Thank you for that. <laughs> wow, did you really not see that we came back? That's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, suit on, ladies and gentlemen. Was it planned? At his peak. I thought, I thought it was cool, real quick. These are, I mean, they're kind Thank of pickups. You. I, did a good I didn't job. buy these, but when I bought those tie cards, they send you a bunch of free ones usually when you buy like overseas ones. So they sent me Are those ones. all tie as well? Yeah. So That's it's actually the really uh, Orangaroo, which I'm sure it's a cheap card, I'm sure. But um, then they also sent me this one, which I don't know which one this is, but the Calyrex one or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I'd like to have them just because they're different languages, you know? Yeah, that's what I thought it was really cool because they were Thai. I was just like, oh, you know, can't go wrong. I, it's not readily available to you. It's not accessible. No. <laughs> I'm so glad it's large screen. We that do. was great. Well, nice. Okay, well, on that note. I have baseball cards. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was perfect timing. I gotta Man, put a bandaid on my blister. Is that your uh, is that your pickup of the week? Your baseball cards, dino badges, or ba badges, bandages, bandage, <laughs> ba badges. Don't need no stinking badges. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank this you so ball. much for joining us for this uh, amazing and ADHD filled podcast. We truly appreciate all of your support. <laughs> Grumpy is just going ham over. It. He he really has uh, found some new power. And this this is why this is why we, we don't, don't ever get him one of those board. sound bars. You know, yeah, we don't need one of those because <laughs> I. What's sad I, is he's the one that does the editing. He had this ability this whole time to add these little effects. Yeah, but I would have to and, go find them, download them, implement oh, them. Yeah, and then he has to he actually <sighs> has to edit them into the videos, and we know that. Yeah, I remember my job is really easy, Sudan. We've heard this before. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> well, thank you all once again. We really appreciate you. Um, definitely leave a comment in the section in the uh, comment section down below um, where you guys think the market for Pokemon is heading, vintage and modern, or whatever your general thoughts are. Uh, very curious to see what you guys all see as well. Um, but that's all we got for this week. So we hope and you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. <laughs> love love bye i want spaghetti